the NASCAR Winston Cup Grand National Tour, improvising before a standing room only crowd at the Nashville 420. And good evening to you. I'm Ken Squire here topside at the start finish line working with us tonight is a two time winner at this track in this event Benny Parsons and we have full flag to flag coverage for you this evening of this night race 420 laps on a 5 8 mile track a track which has been a story of dynasties Petty Yarborough and these days Benny it's Darrell Walter. Well, Darren Waltrip has dominated this race for the past few years, but this year in 1984, if there has been a dominating force on the short tracks, it's been Ricky Rudd. And the last short track race that we had in Martinsville, Virginia, Jeff Bodine was the winner. They start second and third tonight. I think Darren Waltrip's got all he can handle. The pits are a whole different story here, and covering that at the STP Pit Center, here's Dave Despay. Well, Ken, we'll be gathering a tremendous amount of information here tonight. Information that comes from right out there on Pit Road. It's the shortest pit road in Grand National Stock Car Racing. Consider this. There are 24 spaces out there, but 30 cars start the race. That means that six drivers will have to share a parking spot with somebody else. We'll see some great traffic jams on pit road tonight. All the pit crews are feverishly making those last-minute adjustments right now. They're trying to find a mechanical combination, handling, horsepower, all the other elements that will enable their driver to go out there and get around this track quickly. On the big board, we'll follow the progress of those drivers tonight. And let's begin with the guy who so often starts up front at Nashville and on seven different occasions has finished up front. Jerry Garrett is with the pole sitter. Darrell Waltrip, Darrell, what are you going to do to win this race tonight? Well, I don't want to do anything spectacular. Just be uh, smooth, try to stay out of trouble, drive a good, consistent race, make good pit stops, use my head. Did I forget anything? <laughs> we hope not. Now Charlie Roberts with the outside pole. Ricky Rudd will be starting outside the front row. Ricky, the short tracks have been good to you this year, but the guy starting next to you seems to own this one. How are you going to run tonight? Well, we're going to give it our best shot. Daryl has been awfully tough here in the past. We're just going to hope we have everything together so we can handle him tonight. Ricky Rudd, now let's go back to Jerry Garrett with the third place starter. Jeff Bodine. Jeff, you got a broken shoulder blade. Is that going to hurt you tonight? Well, there's just a slight crack into it. The muscles are a little sore around it, but no, I'm ready to go. I think we can go 420. Now back to Charlie Roberts with Ron Bouchard, the fourth place qualifier. Ronnie Bouchard, you started on the short tracks in New England, Saturday night shootouts, your style. How are you going to run tonight here at Nashville? Well, I think we'll run good. We've always been real competitive at Nashville, and uh, it's like a racetrack we've run many, many times at home. Ron Bouchard, he'll be starting fourth tonight. And we'll be taking a look at the starting lineup for the 15th running of the 420 at Nashville after these messages. Ladies and gentlemen, here is your starting lineup for the 1984 Nashville 420. On the pole at 104 miles per hour, defending winner of this event, Darrell Waltrip's number 11, and beside him comes the man you saw win at Richmond, Ricky Rudd in number 15. Row two is number five, colors of Jeff Bodine, who just won his first race at Martinsville, and another Nor'easter. That's Ron Bouchard beside him. In row number three is car number three, Dale Earnhardt, who won here last July, and the Ford number nine of Bill Elliott. Going to row number four, car number 33, Harry Gant carrying our camera, third place finisher here a year ago, and number 75, Dave Marcus. In row five, number 44, Texas Terry Labonte, and beside him comes the rookie, number 88, Rusty Wallace in a Pontiac. Going to row six, number 90, the Junie Don Levy Ford with Richard Brooks at the keyboard and the nine-time winner of Nashville, Richard Petty. In row seven, it's car number 98. That's Joe Rutman's Buick ready for action. And beside him, the defending Grand National Champion, car number 22, Bobby Allison. Completing the first day of qualifying, it's Neil Bonnet starting 15th at car number 12. And you can see out there now Kyle Petty right beside him in the 16th position. Moving to row number nine, and you see Tim Richmond's old Milwaukee colors, number 27. And there's Mike Alexander, a local driver who's done so well on this track. Row 10 is Tommy Ellis, who's moved up to Winston Cup racing. And there's Buddy Arrington from Virginia in car number 67. Moving to row 11 now, and back here comes car number 17. And that's a Colorado driver, Clark Dwyer. Beside him is New York's Greg Sachs. 
going to row 12. Christianburg, Virginia's Ronnie Thomas and DK Ulrich is there in car number six. Tommy Gales, number 64, is on the inside of row 13. And then comes Trevor Boyce, the Canadian driver, in car number 48. Going to row 14, number 95, Sterling Marlin and Jimmy Means is there in the 52. Then in row 15, it's J.D. McDuffie, car number 70, and car number 93. From Michigan comes Morris Randall. And the field is rolling onto the track. Five eighths of a mile, banked 18 degrees in the corners. And now you're inside Harry Gant's Skull Bandit car, number 33, as they take the preliminary laps to the start of the short track event. And the first time you've seen flag to flag coverage on television of a night race. There's only three in Grand National Racing, two in Bristol, Tennessee, one here in Nashville. How about driving at night, Benny Parsons? Well, the best thing about driving, it's cool. Today in Nashville, Tennessee was a very, very hot day, probably close to 90 degrees. But the sun has went down, and we'll probably get down in the 70s tonight. So that's the best advantage, cool weather. Two laps, and they will be racing, and you'll be seeing it right here on WTBS as Saturday night, May 12th, marks the Nashville 420. Field rolls down at a turn number one, 18 degree banks. The straightaways, they hit over 120 miles per hour. The track record is 106, held by the great Cale Yarborough. The record this year was not touched. Wall trip at 104. The asphalt on this track is old. It's been here since 1973. They don't get much of a bite on this track. A lot of slipping, a lot of sliding here. Talking to the drivers and preliminaries, Ken, that was the major, the complaint that I heard was talking to the drivers. Terry Labonte said, it's never been any slicker. I talked to Darrell Walter. He said, I don't ever remember the racetrack being this slick. So it is slick. The pavement has the pavement has deteriorated. It's getting worn. These fellows are going to have their hands full, making adjustments to be able to get around the racetrack tonight. Sellout capacity house here in Nashville, Tennessee on this Saturday night. Peter Kors gave the command to fire the engines, and you see them 30 strong. Here's the pace car coming in, and we're about to go green. And on WTBS, you're watching for the first time flag to flag coverage of a night race down into turn number one. Give it to Waltrip. You want to work the bottom of the track. Into that second spot goes number 15. That's the Ford, the Bud Moore car. Ricky Rudd is there knocking on the door in turn number three. And you can see the sparks fly as he gets down to the bottom over the ripple strip a bit in turn number three. Into the main straightaway. Maintaining third, a hurt Jeff Bodine, broken shoulder blade from a crash at Talladega just last Sunday. Leaders are there, and Rudd wants that lead. He's working right on the rear bumper. Now you see, there's Dale Earnhardt. He's just in front of Harry Gant and the Skull Bandit as they scream down the back straightaway. How much throttle do you use in these corners? Right now, you're using all the throttle you got because the tires are cold, the racetrack is cold, you're getting a good bike coming off this corner. When you get in the middle, you just nail the throttle and drive it off. Bill Elliott is up alongside Harry Gant and trying to move around as they scramble and ramble back there for sixth position. Leaders coming around another time. Three complete. Nashville is where it's happening. And you're watching Darrell Waltrip. He's trying to win three in a row. He's won for the last two years, and each time he won by a lap. One time Richard Petty was seven laps down and came back to win this race. In that case, a lot of the leaders fell back, and he reeled them in as they had mechanical problems. The trick here is to get off these corners as gracefully as you can with a 3,700-pound car. Wheel spin right there will tell the difference in this race. It really will. On the last lap, I was watching Harry again in the Skull Bandit, and he spun at that very spot that we mentioned Darrell Walter was in, and he lost a spot to Bill Elliott. 600 horsepower engines, and they've geared them down, trying to get all the horsepower they can, working into those two rear tires. You get too much wheel spin, and it's good night, nurse. There's your leader, number 11, Darrell Waltrip out in front. And he's getting about a seven car length advantage now over Ricky Rudd in the Ford, running in second place. And now you see Bodine in third, Ron Bouchard in fourth. Waltrip coming from the pole, his second pole of the season. The first was at Richmond. Here he is in turn number one. This looks like a continuation of Martinsville, Ken, because these are the four cars that dominated the race at Martinsville. Uh, Jeff Bodine ended up winning the race. Ricky Rudd had problems. Ron Bouchard was second, and Darrell Waltrip was third. Waltrip coming off the pole for the 39th time in his career, the seventh time here on the famed Tennessee State Fairgrounds at Nashville, Tennessee. 
full flag to flag coverage on this Saturday night, May 12th on Superstation WTBS. Rudd in the second spot and continuing to show sparks as he comes off number three. He's probably dragging the exhaust system as he goes in turn three. There is a bump over there just as you enter the turn and the exhaust system on those cars if they come out the right side particularly they will drag as they go in turn three. In all fairness when you talk about Waltrip as we watch the driver from Colorado come on pit road Dwyer number 17 one of the first cars to come in in the last six years 12 races here Junior Johnson cars have won seven times they've had a couple of seconds and a third. Now there you see the Dwyer car Roger Hamby on machine number 17 in this very congested pit road which really makes for frenzied activity. Here's a report from the STP pit control center Dave Despain. Ken Squire as we watch the early action here with Clark Dwyer temporarily out of the event he's going to lose a lot of laps because the hood is up on the car. We've checked with the Junior Johnson crew and they're very excited about what Darrell Waltrip at car number 11 is able to do here early in the race. You'll note that Waltrip is running right on the bottom of the racetrack in the corners. See how low he comes even though he's out overlapping a slower car. He's right down on the bottom of the track. That's the key to Nashville. They have set up the chassis on that automobile to go quickly on the bottom. The key to this race will be able to keep the car working down there for 420 long laps. The Junior Johnson crew over the years has been the best in the business at doing that. Darrell Waltrip is playing a very pretty tune out there right now. Waltrip who has won four of the last six races here at Nashville drawing away just a bit but really it's stabilized staying about 15 car lengths back is Ricky Rudd in car number 15 is he waiting there Benny. No I don't think so I think they're both running just as hard as they can right now Waltrip I would expect it of him to win away a little bit more as a matter of fact I really felt like Darrell would probably put a straight away on him straight away on him. the fact that Rudd Bodine and Bouchard is this close to me for Waltrip is bad news. We talked to Darrell Waltrip earlier about practicing in the day and then racing at night. Does it make a difference? Under the lights versus uh, the racing out in the sunny in the sunshine. That's a little bit different uh, perspective on the racetrack itself. The biggest thing is the weather, uh, the temperature, the conditions. Uh, like I said, 85 this afternoon down to about probably 55 or 60 tonight. A little moisture in the air. It definitely changes the racetrack and it changes the setup of the car. And again, it, that's when you have to be able to think about what this racetrack's going to be like at 9 or 10 o'clock tonight. Darrell Waltrip leading. Now you're looking at the battle for 12th position. There you see Neil Bonnet and the man who got him started, Bobby Allison, right in front of Richard Petty, is in 11th spot. Back with the leaders. Now you're seeing that battle another time. And here is the 22 car. Bobby Allison working down low, trying to move into 11th, getting underneath Richard Petty. Petty has won nine races at Nashville more than anyone else back inside of the Harry Gant car as he scrambles down into turn number three. Boy, those 18 degree banks really flatten out. You see car number 75 directly in front of him, the Raymock car of Dave Marcus. Dave Marcus had to go a little bit high that time, Ken. Already the cars are going up the racetrack trying to find a bite. I've been watching this race between Bobby, Neil Bonnet, and Richard Petty for the past few laps, and they have really been going after it. You know, Neil's in a bad position. He can't afford to hit Bobby too hard because he's the guy that got him started in this business. There is Allison taking a way wide line out of four and down to the inside comes Bonnet. Remember back in the 70s, a hurt Bobby Allison, bad crash at Minnesota, and he put Neil Bonnet in the car for this track. And Neil Bonnet, in only his second Grand National race, set the car on the pole. They lost five laps because they had to get Allison in the car to gather the points for the race. Neil Bonnet, five laps down, came back to finish seventh that time. And then people began to talk about him as the superstar that Bobby Allison had said he would be for three or four years. Look at that interval as car number 11. Waltrip, that junior Johnson machine, just so trick on this track. Riding that groove, he knows this track so well. Over 60 wins in late model sportsman competition. The laps complete now stand at 20 this time around. 20 of the 420. And you might be interested in how they came to 420 laps. There was a rule years ago in NASCAR that a Grand National race had to run 250 miles. And the distance for 420 laps on the 5 8 mile track, 420 laps it was. And that's how they came to calling it the Nashville 420, and it's never changed. Incidentally, that rule, as you know, with now the Richmond 400 is no longer in effect on a little shorter races. Here's Dave Despain once again at the STP Pit Center. Further information on that uh, Neil Bonnet situation, the teammate to Darrell Waltrip has a special problem here tonight. He's got a broken thumb 
can, and that's a real difficulty. He broke it in a racing incident a couple of races ago. They've taped it up, but the driver of car number 12 is going to have to overcome physical problems as well as the mechanical difficulties of this race. You can see how congested that pit area is. The tire's right up there almost to the center itself because there's just not that much room in the infield. There's Waltrip still drawing a bead on first place as you're watching Flag to Flag coverage on this Saturday night, May 12th, from Nashville, Tennessee. Waltrip in front. That second place continues to belong to number 15, Rickery Rudd. And going third is Jeff Bodine. Ron Bouchard is in fourth. Bill Elliott has moved into fifth. Saturday night and we have a war going here as Darrell Waltrip tries to stretch it in three in a row but right now we're watching car number three the Chevrolet of Dale Earnhardt and right behind him comes the Raymock number 75 that's Dave Marcus and they've got a real scramble going Benny Parsons. They've been going at it for the last five or six laps. Uh, Dale Earnhardt has lost a couple of spots to Bill Elliott and then to Terry Labonte. Dave Marcus came up and they've really been racing. That's the battle for eighth position. Earnhardt holding on trying to stay in that spot, running low on the racetrack, but right there, and Dave Marcus seems really hitched up tonight. Want to run this track low, but it will get very slippery, like a skating rink as it goes around. We're now 28 of the 420 laps complete. 28 complete. And this man here has absolutely dominated Nashville for years. Runs right down below the yellow line on the apron to get that car into the corner with as much power on as possible. No one probably knows more about this track than Darrell Waltrip, with the perhaps exception of the Marlin family. Down the main straightaway, number 44 is trying to make a little bit of a move here on Bill Elliott. Here is Waltrip maintaining the front running position. You see some of the crowd. It is absolutely jammed to the rafters in the fairgrounds tonight here. Walter really has his car hooked up. He's staying right on the bottom of the racetrack. And some of the main contenders are already having to go to the top of the racetrack to try to find the bike. But meanwhile, back Terry Labonte and Bill Elliott still running side by side for fifth spot. And Richard Petty moving in on Harry Gant. Now there's the Harry Gant car in the back straightaway. And Richard Petty is trying to draw a bead on the inside as they go back into turn number three. Right in front of him is number 75. Marcus really working well. You that picture from that car is beautiful, Ken. That really is a fantastic shot. There you see Harry Gant in the 33 car getting just a bit wide as he goes out of number two. He's trying to find a bite up there again. He's running high on the racetrack trying to find a bite. In the old days when Richard Petty dominated here he ran the high side just kept the RPM level up and ran out there. But the track is worn down. Now here's Petty tucking to the inside and the nine time winner at Nashville draws up alongside and loses ground as the RPMs are still a little stouter on car number 33 the Buick the Skull car and here's Petty back another time with the Pontiac on the inside. Oh I tell you that's just so hard to get off that corner side by side. Waltrip continuing to pull away in first. That's really bad news for Harry. I believe that he's having to run that high this early in the race because I haven't seen anyone win the race on the high side. Ken. they always win from the low side eighth position. He is in eighth and he's trying to hold Petty back there in ninth having his problems in the corner. You can see that car just moving up more than perhaps he wants. Here's Petty trying to come underneath the man who's working that steering wheel around this 5 8 mile track as you ride with Harry Gann on the Skull Bandit. Back he goes into the corner and he looks up in front and sees Dave Marcus there as well as Dale Earnhardt in that blue and yellow car the Chevrolet prepared by Richard Childress. They're taking a lap with Harry Gant in the 33. Here's look. Richard Petty right back to the inside another time. Gant fending him off. Gant currently six in the standings and Petty is seventh. They want Neil Bonnets made a good run to come up there behind Harry Gant and Richard Petty. He's trying to go by Harry right now. And there's Bonnet down to the inside making some very good moves. Back with Waltrip the leader for a moment. Back they come and trying to get down on the inside and moving through his bonnet. Bonnet is now beginning to close ground on Richard Petty in car number 43. Here's Dave Despain. 
of the night is Clark Dwyer. Clark Dwyer has blown an engine and gone to the sidelines, but the guy we've been watching the last few laps is Tim Richmond in car number 27. They've got a handling problem and a serious one on that car. He hit the wall twice. He's still out there on the racetrack, but he can't get the car to stick on the bottom. He's been up in the concrete on two different occasions. He's trying to add himself to that attrition list as Waltrip number 11 continues to run out front. Richard Petty maintaining eighth, and now he has Neil Bonnet to contend with. And here is number 11, Waltrip, holding on to that lead position. Waltrip looks like he's out for a Sunday afternoon or Saturday afternoon night ride. He really is working well so far. But, you know, when they start making pit stops, things are going to change, Ken. Tim Richmond way high on the racetrack. Something's amiss on Tim Richmond's car. He's way up on the high side, and he's scrambling to control that machine. Look at him use up the outside. He's trying to find a bike, and he's trying to find some racetrack that he can get a tr some traction on. He can't do it on the bottom of the racetrack. Sometimes when you move up high like that, you can find traction. Petty has drawn away in his battle with Neil Bonnet by about six car lengths for a moment. And look at Richmond working hard to try to find a place to run that car. And he's way high on the track. This pavement here, it really it's the pavement that tells the story on this track, Benny. Oh, it really does. The pavement is deteriorated and worn. And you know, Richmond is so far around the racetrack when you get that high. Look where Darrell Walt is running on the racetrack, fan. Just visualize the amount of distance that Richmond has to run to go way high up a race to racetrack. We've got a car spinning in turn number two. He went all the way around, and it was Richmond in the 27 looping the car. So there is something to miss in the handle on car number 27 as that Pontiac got out from beneath Tim Richmond. And the track is just wide enough as he came off the transition so that Tim didn't get in trouble. And here's Richmond now headed for the pits. He's already won one Grand National race this year. Caution is out around the track, and this will gather the field back up. Waltrip in front. Let's take a look at the replay as to what happened up here. Richmond all by himself. He's just trying to get hold of the racetrack. He gets too high. He's going to get too close to the wall. I think he probably has to jerk the car a little bit right there to get it away from the wall, and he just loses the rear end. Lap 40 was when Richmond brought out the caution. And if you wanted to see some frenetic wheel handling, you should have seen Richmond from close up. But he really had to work that wheel to try to keep that car going. Now he's back on the throttle again. You see the rear Ooh. tires turn. Oh, Greg, Greg Sachs just barely gets by. When you see the rear tires light up and smoke like that, that means he's back on. Look at that shot in the pits. And there you see the frenzy down here on pit road. Really active. There's number nine, Bill Elliott on pit road. But Bill Elliott can't get out because Dale Earnhardt is pulled in front of him, Ken. And Bill Elliott can't, Harry Gant can't get out. Congestion. Boy, we've got it. All the leaders have pitted. Where do you want to pit in this pit? There's only 24 spots for 30 cars. The first, the best pit is the first one, the very first one down in turn one. And all the rest of them are second place. Here's That's Dave right. Despain. What's it look like down there? Well, it looks like the LA freeway at rush hour again. Now it's starting to clear out, and that'll enable the second wave of cars. See them coming on pit road right now? They can't all get in here together. There's just not room. So basically, one wave of cars will come in, make their stops. They're back on the racetrack now, lining up behind the pace car, and everybody else has gone to pit row. So now it's like the uh, mid uh, midday rush in Manhattan as they try to sort it out. A lot of these cars, a lot of these teams are making chassis adjustments on the cars. There's a loose tire, and that's one of the problems that you have on pit road. There's so much confusion, so much chaos, things go wrong. That tire could roll out on the racetrack and cause further difficulties. It Dave, appears to have come to a stop. Dave, and, that's car number 75, and he's down on the bottom of the racetrack trying to come in, and, and he apparently just to get the wheel back on, Benny. It's the left front tire. The wheel has come off that car and he's coming around the racetrack on three wheels. The problem is he's dragging the brake rotor and that's got to do some serious damage to that brake rotor. So the caution is still out. They were preparing to go under green. That will not happen. And we are still under caution as Dave Marcus lost a wheel. He's on pit road right now. Back with more from Nashville this Saturday night after this. It's like six days on the road, and somebody's going to make it home tonight to win some $217,000. The lion's share thereof as we're just back under green. And we got a problem in turn number one. Greg Sachs has tagged the wall on the outside, and caution is out once again. Sachs' car rolling along the outside of turns one and two. He's brought it down. He kept right on going, just brushed the wall as car number 11 came across the stripe. 
They pick up another lap and they go right back to caution. Now there's Greg Sachs, number 51, and I think we're going to see a whole lot of that kind of activity here tonight, Benny. I really, I think we are too, Ken, because uh, the racetrack is slick. As all the drivers have mentioned, it is slick and it's gonna be very difficult. He, the right front tires off of this car, or something's broken. He banged the wall as he went into turn number one, got it back to full power, shot right up the track, just kissed the concrete, and then went all the way around number two. He, he didn't spin, he kept right on going. Meanwhile, the leaders pulled away. Here's how it stands, 48 of the 420 laps are complete as you look out of Harry Gant's car, and there you can see Bobby Allison right behind him. Waltrip is first, Ricky Rudd is in second, Bouchard is running third, up to fourth is going to move Dale Earnhardt, in fifth is number 44, and that machine, of course, is Terry Labonte, crew chief Dale Inman. In the sixth position is Bill Elliott, in seventh is Richard Petty, and going eighth as they get ready to go again would be Neil Bonnet with the ninth position, belonging to Jeff Bodine, unofficially in 10th, the number 27. No, he's Richmond, a lap he, down. Did he go a lap down? He is a lap down, yes. So then go back to 10th position. 88 and there car. you would find the 88 car, Rusty Wallace. And Good run for Rusty tonight. Well, 11th is uh, the number 33 car of Harry Gant. 12th would be number 22, Bobby Allison's car. 13th, number 90, Richard Brooks. And then comes number 98, Joe Rutman, who won a pole the other day. Things just have not gone well for him this year. I talked to Joe down in the pits yesterday and I said, Joe, it hasn't been a good year. He said, well, not yet. So he has still hasn't lost his optimism. He thinks he's, they're going to be able to turn it around and still make 1984 a good year. Bill Elliott out here in that car number nine. We asked him earlier about the importance of the pits here at the Nashville Fairgrounds. And this is what Bill Elliott had to say about them. It's one of the toughest pit roads we have to deal with. And the thing of it is you can lose so much time in the pits or you can gain so much time in the pits. And I feel like a good, qualify, good qualifying position and a good way up front and staying up front is going to mean a lot here getting in and out of the pits. Ready to go. The pace car is back on pit row at 50 laps complete. There's the brake. And you see Tim Richmond's car just on the tail end of a lead lap right down to the bottom side of the track. Fast cars on the outside. 75. Marcus getting a little bit of a wrap on the car in the second position. The 15 of Ricky Rudd who stays there. Now Richmond seems to be running a little better at this point. Let's see if he's found the handle back on that car. Richmond wants to get by Darrell Walter to get that lap back. But he's going to have a hard time doing it. Meanwhile, down to the inside goes Ricky Rudd. And look at the Chesapeake Virginian move in on. And again, Richmond getting high. He falls back further now as Ricky Rudd stays right there within striking distance. Ron Bouchard at number 47, who grew up on the half miles in the New England area, maintains third. Here they are, out of turn number four, down the main straightaway, about 120, 125 miles per hour. Then you roll back and look at this congestion as they fight for positions. Uh -huh. That is congestion. The number nine. In the sixth position, Terry Labonte, he cuts through. That number three car winging its way. The Skull Bandit, right there is the Trevor Boyce, number 48, prepared by James Hilton. And look at this, Bobby Allison noses right in there. <laughs> three abreast coming off the second corner. Talk about fender flailing, folks. Here it is from Nashville on WTBS this Saturday night. Allison is on his way down on the inside as he strikes and moves around the skull bandit of Harry Gant. Back into turn number three. Bobby Allison, defending champion, winner of 80 grand national races. Trying to find the handle and move under Trevor Boyce in the 48. Trevor, who comes out of the western portion of Canada, here's number 90, also moving through. Richard Brooks, who's never had much luck here at Nashville, pulling up. And Joe Rubin, who had, hasn't had any luck all years, pull up on the outside of Harry Gant. Harry Gant, who is such a good driver on tracks of this size, and you've got to know he's having some problems here. Here's Kyle Petty moving around him. He is having some problems. He's dropping back too rapidly right now, Kim. Kyle Petty picks up a spot. Tough going, hard old racetrack, Nashville Fairgrounds. In the early days, it was names like Joe Weatherly and Rex White victorious here. At one time, the banking was 35 degrees on this track. Two drivers lost their lives in two years, and they reduced the banking down to some 18 degrees. But it's still a track that can bite you and bite you fast. There's your leader, number 11, Waltrip in first, and trailing him down into turn number one is the Ford 
of Ricky Rudd. Ron Bouchard hasn't had a call tonight very much, Kim, but he's really doing a good job. He's third place and really not too far behind. We can see him almost in the picture right there. There's your interval, one, two, three. But the focus of attention and the crowd had a very mixed reaction when he was introduced tonight. They love him or they hate him, but there's no in between on this man, Daryl Waltrip, twice the Grand National Champion. More victories than anyone on this track. Cut his teeth here after racing in Owensboro, Kentucky. Battle for sixth, seventh, and eighth right here. And look at Bill Elliott. The Dawsonville, Georgia driver scoots down into the corner, holding off the man who's won here nine times, Richard Petty. Bill Elliott, who always looks like he'd be much more comfortable playing checkers somewhere, Benny, but he is such a good race driver. He really is an excellent race car driver, and Richard Petty is having his problems keeping Jeff Bodine behind him. Bodine last week at Talladega hit the wall very hard, cracked a shoulder blade, but it don't look like it's bothering him right now. The tires smoldering as they ramrod these 3,700 pound cars around this 5 8 mile track. The Tennessee State Fairgrounds is where it's happening this Saturday night, May 12th, and you're watching it right here on WTBS. Full flag to flight coverage. Petty comes back to the inside. Petty trying to put the Pontiac underneath the Ford in the main straightaway. So we're going to see races like this all night long. Somebody on the high side, somebody on the low side, trying to get around this racetrack the quick way. Battle for six. Petty there. He is there. Petty wants that 199th win. What a night this would be if he could pull it off. Here comes Bodine on the outside. Bodine trying to find a little bit of room there. S sneaks a peek down the middle of the track and then elects to stay right where he is and wait on Petty to try to move underneath Bill Elliott. Trevor Boy stays wheel to wheel with Harry Gant further back in the field. Look at the tire marks on 48. He's seen some abuse. Elliott maintaining about a half car length advantage. Petty again nips down to the bottom of the track. Low groove track this Nashville track. Elliott seems to find some room up on top and draws away by a car length. And Neil Bonnet has come up to join the fray. He says I want some of this. Scramble for six. Elliott leading it. Petty next. Then Bodine. And here comes Neil Bonnet. Neil Bonnet on the high side looking for some running room. You know, Neil Bonnet is driving a sister car to Darrell Waltrip's car. Both come out of Junior Johnson's shop in Ronda, North Carolina, so we know that the 12 car has capabilities. Richard Petty out here in car number 43. Back in that seventh position, working on car number nine. How is your short track program coming these days, Richard? Well, you know, we have our ups and downs, I guess. Uh, the short tracks has not been one of our strong suits. Uh, you know, the big tracks and stuff, we've run real good on all year long. and. Uh, I think that our short track program is coming together a little bit better, but uh, you know we still got a long way to go on it. And uh, you know if we hit the right combination here, then we'll be in good shape. If we don't, then uh, somebody else is going to be in better shape than we are. Ronnie Thomas spinning in turn number two. Ronnie that's another Thomas. car, Ken, that's been running extremely high. Something like the 27 car of, of Tim Richmond a moment ago, and I think he just simply got a bit too high, got the loose stuff, and around the car came happens in the 66 lap 66 of 420 Romney Thomas an independent out of Virginia back with it caution is on the track that'll gather the field up down they go and you can hear those engines back off as they move through the corner it was a good caution for Harry again because I was looking at him a couple of laps before that and Ken he just lost it coming off the second corner and did a super job saving the car leaders are on pit road there's Waltrip number 11 in all the leaders have come in Petty stays on the track in 43 he'll inherit the lead Richard Petty going down into turn number one behind the safety car Allison is pitted and it will be Richard Petty when we come back of course he probably will come around to lap and he will pit but for the moment there's the man out in front it's Richard Petty looking for his 199th win will it happen tonight here on WTBS from the Tennessee State Fairgrounds back in a moment a capacity house getting all the thrills they expected when they came to the Nashville Fairgrounds to see this Winston Cup $200,000 shootout tonight there you see some of the activity down on pit road as car number 51 Greg Sachs tries to roll out here tight congested area the leader is Richard Petty on the track he elected not to pit Benny Parsons I don't understand that either Ken I really don't because tires is very very important at Nashville the surface being worn as it is new tires is such a an advantage for you Greg Sachs car something is broken on the right front they made a pit stop a moment ago jacked up took the tire off 
and the guy made the symbol that something was broken on it. I don't know what it was. Here's Dave Despain. A lot of activity down here in the pits during this yellow flag stop. Harry Gant made three or four major chassis adjustments during the stop. He was having a big problem with handling on that race car just before the yellow flag. The two front running cars, Darrell Waltrip and Ricky Rudd, collided, leaving the pits. But perhaps the biggest story right now is with the Waltrip pits. He's led this race all the way under green, but the first set of tires that they took off the car were running much, much too hot. They're very concerned that that problem might continue. The car is working well, it's running well, it's sticking to bottom of the racetrack, but they're giving up an awful lot of tire wear in the process. We'll keep an eye on that story. Ken? 72 laps will be complete. They say there may be a broken sway bar on car number 33, Harry Ganscar. On Harry Ganscar. Hal Needham is up here, and I, he walked by a moment ago. I asked Hal what the problem was. He said they think maybe that the front stabilizer bar is broken on the 33 car. Harry Gant, number 33, third place finisher in this event one year back. There you see Waltrip's number 11, which is now looking up from under. He's out of the top five. The top five looks like this. Petty, number 43, has secured first position. The second place car is car number 90. And the 90 car, Richard Brooks, is holding on to that spot. Going in the third position, number 98. And that is Joe Rutman as we get ready for a restart. We're going to have a real run for it when they get ready to go. And I think we have uh, in the fourth position now car number 12. Number 95 may have gone a lap down, Sterling Marlin. And Neil Bonnet will find himself up in fourth with the fifth position. Car number 15. There's a, a lot of smoke coming out of number 17, the Roger Hamby car, with the rookie out of Colorado at the controls. He may be getting ready to pit that one. His dad was a sprint car racer, this boy in uh, number 17. The smoke seems to go away once he gets on the street. No, it's coming back a little bit. Maybe a valve cover problem on car 17. Getting set for a restart. Light is off on the pace car. Field moves down. Getting ready for a go. 17 getting the signal to come in here, I think, and being told to bring his car on pit road. Field getting set. They're back under green. Into the first turn. Petty in the lead. So he got a little loose there for just a second on the start. Trevor Boy has almost gotten the fence going in turn one that time, but he saved the car, just brushed the fence. Coming up is car number 90, Richard Brooks. In second spot, number 98 is in third. But the man that everyone will be watching now is car number 12 on the end of that five-car choo-choo train. That is Neil Bonnet, back in number 12, and he will be making his moves up through. See him there coming off turn number two. Now you're with Petty, the leader. Field, just a blaze of color under the lights here in Nashville, Tennessee, and here comes Bonnet to the inside. That blue car we're looking at right now, Dave Marcus has gotten that lap back. He is in the lead lap. If the caution comes out, Ken, he's able to go all the way around the racetrack and make up an entire lap. Pack moving through. Allison trying to find some running room here as they move around some lap cars. Buddy Errington down on the inside. Joe Rutman gets a little high, and he's way to the outside of the track. This track really making them loose if they get out of the groove at all. There's your leader, number 43. Richard Petty in the 43, staying in that front running position. Darrell Walter, Darrell Walter's having a little problem getting by Tommy Ellis right now. Tommy Ellis can really give you some trouble getting through. He really can. Excellent sportsman car driver. Here's Darrell Waltrip winding his way through traffic. Trying to make up some ground and get back in this race. He's now running in fifth place. What makes this track slippery, Darrell? You can't get traction off the turns. We pull a relatively low gear for a track this size. That means we got a lot of, of horsepower coming off of these turns. And the track is worn. The tires are maybe a little too hard for night racing. And it causes a car to break loose off of both turns. If you can get a car to come off of this fourth turn and the second turn straight without getting sideways, you're going to lap the field. If you start smoking the tires, uh, the right rear tire here up off the corner, then you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Sterling Marlin has won a lot of races getting held on the outside and Waltrip moves through running in fifth and trying to close on Petty. He's running about a quarter of a lap down from him. But Neil Bonnet's the man on the move in the sister car to this number 11. Petty is now first but second is Bonnet. He has been flying. He is flying again and if he can get by Petty he's got clear racetrack and Darrell Waltrip is complete straightaway behind him. 
As we mentioned earlier, it is a very old section of asphalt here in this 5 8 There's number 12, Bonnet, who is closing on Petty. He is now about 10 car lengths down from the leader. And he's closing again up in turn number three. Neil Bonnet closing in on Richard Petty. We're about to get into a real fracar for the lead, as old David Hobbs would say. <laughs> we really are. You know, Richard did not pit the last time. I still don't understand it because if we can see the evidence right now just how much an advantage the new tires are on Neil Bonnet's car. Petty in front. Neil Bonnet right there in that second spot. Will this be Bonnet's night? Laps complete. We're up to 83. You're following the battle for first place. Petty there, Bonnet second. Maintaining third is car number 90, Richard Brooks, and then 15 car lengths back. Darrell Waltrip has moved to fourth. Dave Despain. Bonnet is really getting after Richard Petty. Remember, Neil Bonnet is in a sister car to Darrell Waltrip. Give Darrell all the credit in the world for being a great driver. There goes Bonnet trying the outside on Petty. Part of the key to Waltrip's success is that he's in a Junior Johnson car, and Junior is the master of the short track setup. Neil Bonnet is also in a Junior Johnson car, but the thing to remember is that Bonnet has a broken thumb. He broke it two weeks ago in a short track. His crew chief, Doug Rickard, has a broken leg. He broke that at Daytona in a pit crash. They joked earlier that they were going to have to get handicapped parking. There goes Bonnet up the outside. Neil Bonnet rim rides his way up in front and begins to drive away. Bonnet, using a little bit of a high lane there, finds his way into first. I tell you what, it's a wonder that they got off the second corner without making contact because they were so, so close to getting into each other. And as you come off that turn, the fence, the outside retaining wall is right there. There's a battle where we're still watching Richard Petty. Richard Petty in that second spot, trying to close it back up again. Battle beginning to develop for third spot. Darrell Walter disposed of that battle real quick. Car number 11, Waltrip cranks it right down the straightaway, and he's pulling up a spot. Waltrip has now pulled into third. His number 90, Richard Brooks, is falling back. Richard Brooks falling back as they go into turn number three, and now number three down the inside. Number 90, Brooks is beginning to lose ground on the bottom of the racetrack. Number three, it is Dale Earnhardt showing the Richard Childress power. Brooks falling back into fourth. And it is now Earnhardt for third spot in the Nashville 420. More and more. There's your leader on this Saturday night in Nashville. It is Neil Bonnet now in front, but the story is on pit road. Here's Jerry Garrett. Dale Earnhardt unexpectedly on pit road. Dale, what's the matter with your car? Dale says 
says there's an engine problem with the car right now. He doesn't know exactly when it can be fixed. He's going to try and get back out there as soon as he can, but it looks very bad right now, Ken. And noisy down there. Benny Parsons, number 98, is also rolling on the pit road. And let's go down to Charlie Roberts. We're with Doug Rickard, Neil Bonnet's crew chief. Doug, Neil's in the lead. You and Junior Johnson just had a conference. How's it going out there? Well, right now the car is running uh, just a little bit on the loose side, and we're going to try to correct it with some uh, tire stagger adjustment from the next stop. What was Junior's advice? Well, it's, uh, it's kind of hard to match up these tires when uh, you only come in and have two tires like we did on the last stop, uh, and the tire stagger probably is just a little bit off right now. Doug Rigger, back on pit road after his accident at Daytona. Broken leg and all. The halt in the main out here. A broken right hand on Neil Bonnet, the driver who was out in front, taped all the way up through. That number 12 continues to show the way. And number 11, Darrell Waltrip, is trying his very best to make up some ground here. He did. He got by Richard Petty, Ken. Uh, we have Junior Johnson cars right now, one and two. Neil Bonnet leading the race, Darrell Waltrip running second. Interesting car out here also is the 75 car. The machine there, there you're inside of Harry Gant's car for just a moment, the number 33 machine. But one of the cars that has been a lap down working his way back into it is the Dave Marcus machine. There you see it. He has made up a considerable amount of time. He really has. You know, a moment ago we talked about him getting passing Richard Petty and getting back in the lead lap. Well, he put a straightaway on those leaders. Just boom, put a straightaway on. So Marcus right now is one of the faster cars on the racetrack. Well, the Warner Hodgson cars, Junior Johnson team, running first and second here at Nashville with a third spot now being given to Jeff Bodine's car number five. Richard Petty is back and forth in car number 43, and Terry Labonte finds himself in the fifth position as we come to 100 of the 420 laps complete. And the story is not so much in horsepower, but is how you use it on this racetrack tonight. It really is. You know, we see all these cars that are running high, high on the racetrack. Joe Rutman is one of those cars. One problem that you got when you run up there is there's a lot of debris. You can get flat tires. Joe Rutman had a right front tire go flat a moment ago. Had to make an unscheduled pit stop. Car number three has come back on the track. Dale Earnhardt is now back on the track after he lost at least eight laps. Cars numbers 11 and 12 running first and second. Here's David at the STP pit center. Ken, further to that story on the tire stagger, it's important to remember what Doug Reichert, the crew chief on the number 12 car of Neil Bonnet, was talking about. When the tires are inflated, they end up being slightly different in circumference, and that difference affects the handling of the automobile. The key is to get the right combination. That's what they talk about when they say stagger. Darrell Waltrip has a good set of tires now, but remember that on car number 11, they're worried about a tire heating problem. So even though the two cars of Junior Johnson, the number 11 there of Waltrip running second, and the car just ahead of him, the number 12 of Neil Bonnet, appear to be in command right now, they both do have a tire condition to worry about. Reichert wants to make a stop, ideally under yellow, get a new set of tires for the number 12 car, and meantime, number 11, Waltrip is concerned about his tire heating problem. 100 lap rundown upcoming, and here comes Waltrip. Waltrip closing round. There's Trevor Boyce up on the outside. Number 11 closing on the sister car, number 12, in the Chevrolet SS Monte Carlos as they wheel down into turn number one. So it is an inter-team rivalry now with Bonnet leading and Waltrip in the second position. Doug Rackard a moment ago in the interview mentioned that Bonnet only changed two tires. Darrell Walter put on four, so he has a bit of an advantage in the tire situation right now. Shades of what we saw at Richmond, Virginia back in February once again when those team cars hitched up and ran one and two for a long time. But remember, at Richmond, when it was all over, the race was Ricky Rudd's. And Ricky Rudd is still in this race, still running well. Latest standings coming up in just a moment. Front two cars. Trevor Boyce running very well on the outside. A lap down. The fellow from Calgary, Alberta. And the number five car of Bodine is back in this thing. He now is, there's he, Jeff Bodine who won at Martinsville, Benny, in great style. He really did. And I tell you what, we talk about Daryl and he's catching Neil Bonnie, but he's not leaving Jeff Bodine. He's right on his bumper. Jeff is back there. He looks like he's ready to go tonight again. 11 and 12. 12 and 11. One and two out here right now. Neil Bonnet 
What's the key to really going fast at Nashville? The key is to be able to run in the bottom of the racetrack when you want to, not to be up around that outside wall sliding around. It's fast up there, but the guy that's going to be able to win is going to be able, when he wants to, drive in the bottom and go around race cars, pass them in the top and all around his track. And it's awful hard to get a car handling like that. And hopefully, with Junior's and uh, Junior's experience at this particular racetrack, I think my car's got that, that capability. Certainly looks it right now. Bonnet back into three. Here comes Waltrip, staying about six car lengths back. And a little smoke off car number five, Bodine's car, Benny, if he came through three. He was probably spoken to tire just a little bit up in turn three. Because Darrell Waltrip is content to be where he is right now, I think. Jeff Bodine does not want to be there. Here's Jerry Garrett. Ted Road here with Richard Childress, the crew chief of Darrell Waltrip, Dale Earnhardt. Richard, what was the problem on Dale's car? Uh, the distributor quit on us. Uh, we thought it was a backup ignition, but we put it, it was a distributor. Is he able to run quickly now again? Yeah, he, he's back just like we were. He's running real fast. We just took our chances away of winning them. Well, he lost a lot of time. That's critical right now. On this Saturday night, you're watching flag to flag coverage for the first time of a night race on the Winston Cup Grand National Tour. It's from Nashville, Tennessee. There you see the Dale Earnhardt car number three trying to make up some time after being in the pits a considerable space of laps out here in this event. One hundred. 13 laps are now complete. Jeff Bodine is, is still gaining on Darrell Walter. He is really running tonight, Ken. Jimmy Means, the number 52, is high. Now here you see Bodine down on the bottom of the racetrack. Has a fractured shoulder blade. Not particularly serious. It's a hair fracture, but that tells you he hit the wall pretty hard a week ago at Talladega, Alabama. And just six nights later, he's out here with that Spurlock Hendrick car going after his second Grand National win. And remember, he wanted a track very similar to this, not banked as high, at Martinsville, Virginia, a half mile just a matter of days ago. You know, I was at Talladega, two cars behind Jeff Bodine when he had his problem and hit that fence. And it's a miracle he's out of hospital, much less going around this racetrack on Saturday night. He is sore, and they've had some folks working with him all week long. The question was, would he be able to last out here tonight? Jeff told me he was going to be able to just fly when they dropped the flag, and he had no intention of finding a replacement for himself in this race. He wants to win it. Boy, what a battle for the lead, Ken. This is great. Three cars, almost bumper to bumper. That is Jeff Bodine still maintaining third spot. Let's go to Jerry Garrett. Uh, to Charlie Roberts. Here's Charlie. Master mechanic Harry Hyde. Jeff Bodine hurt his shoulder at Talladega. Has he talked to you on the radio? How does he feel running in third place? Well, he says he feels real fine. Uh, uh, he has his sore muscle all taped up, and uh, he said he feels real good. And uh, that if things keep going the way they are, he thinks he can bring this one home tonight. Is the car running well? Real good. Real good. Harry Hyde. Harry Hyde, at 54 years of age, had a lot of wins, well over 40 Grand National wins, had the 1970 Grand National champion in Bobby Isaac. Now he thinks that this fellow here, Bodine from the Northeast, can do it. Both fast cars, puts them out on the racetrack, and then let them decide it between them, and there is probably no more bitter rivalry between two drivers than Neil Bonnet versus Darrell Waltrip. Right now that rivalry is about two feet apart on the front straightaway, but the real spoiler in this story, Ken, is the man lurking in third spot. Don't be surprised if Jeff Bodine makes that the race for second and third. 120 laps when they come by this time. Three cars gathered up for the lead. It is Bonnet in first, Waltrip in second, Jeff Bodine lurking in third spot. We'll be back with more in a moment. The Mad Mary Ground is here at the Nashville Fairgrounds tonight. We are now some 126 laps deep into the Music City 420. Just a great with the Nashville 420 tonight here at Music City. And we're watching as Neil Bonnet fends off Darrell Waltrip in second place. Jeff Bodine is running in third. You see the number three car trying to make up some time as is number 75. Marcus is getting a lap back as is car number three going into turn number one, Benny. Dale Earnhardt has made that long pit stop. They changed four tires while it was changing the distributor, so he really has an advantage. He's making the most of it. He's going by Marcus, he's going by Bonnet, all of them. But Marcus has made up a lap as well in the 75. Dave Marcus in the blue number 75. 
He has made up a lap to get himself back. There are 15 cars running with the lead in the lead lap. And there you see the men who are really telling the story. It is number 12, Bonnet, by one car length. Waltrip in second. Bodine stays in the third position with the fourth spot. Now Richard Petty. And running fifth overall is Ricky Rudd. Here's David. Ken, it's always good news to be 129 laps into one of these races and only see one name up on the attrition board. Maurice Randall is out of the race with a blown engine. Clark Dwyer was up here. They went to the garage, fixed the car. He's back on the racetrack. The Richard Childress crew has fixed Dale Earnhardt's distributor. He's back out there. We've only got one car out of the race, 128 laps in to the 420-lap event. 30 cars starting. Now number 75, Bodine is a... Whether number 75, Marcus, in the Raymock car, is about to go a lap down to Bonnet again. Bodine maintaining third right there. Those front three cars all together. Uh, this is wonderful. Really wonderful. Car in the wall at turn four. Bill Elliott. The 13th place runner, Elliott. Coming very slowly. There's no caution on the track. Looked like he was in contact. He now gets down. He has a right front tire now. The right front tires went flat. Bill Elliott in number nine. Limps down on the inside of the track into turn number one. That's a tough break. The caution did come out. He's going to lose several laps getting around to the pits to get more tires. I'll tell you why it's hard. You know, these races and cars are sponsored. His sponsor is sponsoring the race for the first time. Elliott trying to put on a good performance here, and he now finds himself going already one lap down and probably two before he gets back to the pits to change that right front. At least two, and probably once he makes a pit stop, will be three laps down. 132 laps now complete. Pulling on to pit road, Bill Elliott. Here's Jerry Garrett. Bill Elliott's coming in here now. He's got damage on the right side of the car at this point. Looks like it could be fixed from getting back out there quite quickly. Vespucci is very concerned. This time that he's going to lose, he's not going to be able to make up, Ken. Well, that's a tough one. Looking at it from a couple of angles as they work on the nose of car number nine, Bill Elliott, one of the most likable people in the game. Said the other night the key to this track was just getting off those corners and not spinning those wheels. Went through about 10 catfish while he told us how to do it. <laughs> He must have some pretty severe sheet metal damage because they've been trying to beat the tires, the fenders off the tires. But he's back on the race right now. 134 laps now complete. Bonnet drawing away, lapping Harry Gant. Has about a six car length advantage now over Waltrip in second. Bodine still waiting in the third spot. You're back another time with Harry Gant, Skull Bandit. Hard, long night for him when you're not running right. This track is absolutely unbearable. It is an exercise in futility. You just can't do anything right. You try to run high, you can't get around the racetrack. You try to run low, and all you do is slip and slide. I know exactly what Harry Gant, I've been through it many, many times here. He's, he's got a long 100 laps, in, 300 laps in front of him. Ken Squire, there is the tire that was Bill Elliott's demise, and that's a big disappointment for this crew. Elliott blew that right front, got into the wall, tore up the race car. They have made repairs. He should be able to run at speed, but he lost a lot of laps in the process. This crew, the pit crew, felt they lost the race. You see the problem. There's the puncture. Benny Parsons alluded earlier to the fact that when you have to run up at the top of the racetrack, there's a lot of junk, a lot of debris up there. Elliott ran over something and got a flat tire. They felt that their pit work at Talladega cost them the race last week. They thought that their Bill Elliott's best shot to win a short track this year was in this race at Nashville, and that uh, hope just got punctured, as did the right front tire. Leader, Bonnet. Second, Waltrip, Bodine is there, and here is the battle. This is for fifth position. There you see the number 15 and the 47 getting together. And that is Ricky Rudd on the high side, and down comes that 47. And a moment ago, Benny, you said Bouchard was the man to watch out here. He really is, because he had to start dead last in this after this restart, after the caution flag. He's made his way all the way up to sixth place. He's battling Rudd right now for fifth, and he's running on the bottom of the racetrack. Rudd is having to run on the high side. And I really don't think that anybody can win the race on the high side of the racetrack. Ron Bouchard currently 10th in the national standings. 235 points only out of first place where Waltrip stays. And here is Bouchard out of Fitchburg, Massachusetts, working on the inside of Chesapeake, Virginia's Ricky Rudd. 
You're watching fifth place in the 140th lap of 420 at Nashville, Tennessee, here on Superstation WTBS. That's Tommy Ellis just in front of them. Leaders back in the 18 degree banking another time. And look at Bonnet pull away to about an eight car length advantage. I think that uh, he got by Ronnie Thomas going into turn one and had to put Darrell Waltrip up on the outside. I think that was what momentarily got him a few car lengths. Darrell Waltrip is coming right behind him again. again. He's right on his bumper. Here comes Waltrip up. We asked Neil Bonnet earlier if tire handling is important here in Nashville. Neil Bonnet commented on that earlier today. Neil? These tires we run are very soft. If you spin them off that corner two or three times, they're gone. It burns the rubber up. Even after they cool back down, they're not as good a tire as it was before. So you've got to baby those things along at full speed, and that's kind of hard to do. Not much babying out there right now. No, he's not being able to baby it too much. As, as I said a moment ago, I don't think Darrell Waltrip is too concerned about taking the lead. He would like to have the lead because there is bonus points. Uh, in the Winston Cup standings if he can lead the race. I think he just wants to to be the challenge for the lead and be there and have the opportunity to win once the race is over. Looking further back in the standings, Terry Labonte is currently in seventh and the eighth position in the latest rundown show Richard Brooks as the battle continues to unwind out here. Ken Squire, one of the interesting stories here is two of the young lions of this game in the driver category do battle. Neil Bonnet and Darrell Waltrip on the racetrack. It's a fascinating uh, evolution that's going on with the pit crews. The crews on these two cars are led by two of the new breed of crew chief. On the number 12 car that's leading, Doug Rickard is the guy who runs the show. He's 23 years old. Jeff Hammond is the ramrod of the number 11 team of Darrell Waltrip. He's under 30. Now, they both work under the tutelage of the grand old man of the game, Junior Johnson, who's been around since day one. But the point is that from out of the ranks are coming a whole breed of new guys who know what it takes to make a grand national car go fast around the racetrack. It used to be the old guys, the Harry Hydes, the Bud Moores, the Junior Johnsons, who've been doing this for years and years and years. But now the new kids are coming along, and they're really doing well. Getting really high on the racetrack now in fourth place is car number 15, Ricky Rod, and here comes Bouchard as they lap Buddy Arrington another time and scoot down the main straightaway. A little over 120 miles an hour into first turn. Here's Bouchard back on the bottom of the racetrack. He just can't get enough traction, just can't get enough bite getting off that second and fourth corner to get by Rudd. He can get in the corner on the bottom side. He can go through the middle of the corner. He just can't quite get the traction he needs getting off, Ken. Number 47, Bouchard down low. Number 15, Rudd on the high side. There's the battle. And there's Ron Bouchard, the man making a run for the fourth position. Good racing here at Nashville tonight. <laughs> terrible feeling, terrible feeling for Bouchard. He drives down there and he wants to say, Ricky, come on, man, let me buy because I can outrun you. You know I can. <laughs> sure I think he might will. have it. No. 15 cars still in the lead lap. 148 laps into it. And there's Bouchard, bottom side, making his move. And he's on his way. And now the leaders are getting together. Down the main straightaway, Darrell Waltrip is looking like he wants to make a move, Benny. He made a serious move on Neil Bonney going in turn three. He made enough move that the fans jumped to their feet. This is Tennessee country. Darrell Waltrip's home is only about 20 miles from here. Top three cars all together. Any contact between those team cars? And hello, Jeff Bodine. <laughs> I think Dave Despain hit the nail on the head a moment ago when he mentioned Junior Johnson. He has some young guys, but I think under Junior's tutelage is, is the reason these cars run so well. And on this racetrack, when you think about the cars that have won here, go back to Allison when he won here, Junior Johnson car. Going a lap down is Allison. Bobby Allison going one lap down right there. Not a good night for Allison here at Nashville. That's amazing, and I really expected Bobby to be a serious contender to win this race tonight. Well, it hasn't been his year. Just no. has not been the year for Bobby Allison. He's back ninth in the standings currently. Still trying to get it sorted out. He's broke. You know, Bobby Allison said someplace, I read someplace, he said he's broken things you didn't know he could break. He really has had a tough mechanical year. So Bobby Allison, defending Grand National Champion in car number 22 is having his problems at Nashville and is falling behind to the leaders. He was running unofficially in 12th position. So 
Those two leaders are just overwhelming the field, or three leaders now, because don't leave out Jeff Bodine. More from the Nashville Fairgrounds in a moment. Continuing coverage of the Nashville 420 is being brought to you by Bush Beer. Remember, don't just reach for a beer. Head for the mountains. Crash on the back straightaway as we're back underway. One car spinning, looping all the way around, coming out of turn number two. I believe it is the Tim Richmond car. He lost it out of two, smacked the wall on the outside and lands on the inside and brings out the caution flag once again. And so for the second time tonight at almost the same place, this time with much more dire difficulty, Tim Richmond has had his problems tonight. We can see the right front fender matched up where he's hit, made contact with the fence, either the inside or the outside. I think it was the outside retaining wall, as you mentioned, Tim. 158th lap was when that happened. Just moments ago, while we were in commercial, car number seven, Kyle Petty, who was running in 10th, was lapped by the three leaders. So we have nine cars now running the lead lap. And Bobby Allison made an unscheduled pit stop to change the right side tires, lost another lap to the leaders' camp. We've been talking about the front five. Let me give you a bit further back. Sixth is Petty, seventh is Richard Brooks, going in the eighth position. And running very well is Terry Labonte. Running ninth is Rusty Wallace, the former ASA champion. Kyle has been in the 10th position. 11th has been Harry Gant. And the 12th position, Dave Marcus. Here's Jerry Garrett. Let's see if we can get a word from him. Jerry? Well, Ken, Bobby Allison's in here again. He really got caught out badly by that last uh, yellow flag. He had just come in for an unscheduled stop. He's got a bad handling. Probably see his back bumper was ripped off there. He's definitely out of the hunt as far as being competitive in this race at this point, Ken. The Tim Richmond car number 27 has brought out, I believe, what is marked as the fifth caution thus far in the race. Bad break for Tim Richmond. Certainly has not had much fortune here and isn't feeling too well this week. Here's Richmond's car number 27 lurching back onto pit road as we speak, and you see his team ready for him right there. Car is in. They go to work on it, and here's Charlie Roberts. The right front fender of Tim Richmond's car is bent. The crew's over there trying to unbend it so they can get a new tire on. Tim is sitting in the car with kind of a disgusted look on his face. The old Milwaukee crew is having a long night as Richmond's been loose all evening long. Number 27, Richmond. Pulled one off. One one race this year. North Wilkesboro. Three grand national wins to his credit with that car number 27. And I tell you what, he was not in the race at North Wilkesboro. You know, he run fourth, fifth, or what have you, but he stayed in the same lap. Made a pit stop later on, an excellent pit stop by his crew, and he won, he won the race going away. But Several laps. He's, he's a couple of laps down right now. Several laps down, number three, Earnhardt coming back on the track. <laughs> Boy, problems just manifest themselves on a pit road like that, don't they? Oh, man? they really do. It's, there's just no room at all. Well, there's a lot of talk about the rebuilding of this Nashville track and repaving. Warner Hodgson is here this week looking at the track. It's another sellout. They always sell out the grandstand here. I believe it's about 16, 18,000 seats. And they put 2,000 seats on sale this morning and by noon, goodbye. I tell you what, is it, there's a lot of race fans in the Nashville area. Grand National Racing is a big sport around here, and they could, you know, they could sell 50,000 seats if they had them. I asked Darrell Waltrip about tracks. I said, if you had your choice of half miles, what half mile would be your favorite? And he said, unequivocally, Nashville. He said, the track, the, the asphalt is a little worn. It is a low groove track at the present time. But so I can tell you over the years, this is the track where if you really want to get running, you can run and you can hang it out and really maneuver. And he won a lot of races on the outside. Do we have a consultation flag on Allison? I, I think he has. He's probably that rear bumper hanging out of there, hanging out in the back. They want him to knock it off probably. After the pit stop, we still have those three cars gathered just as they were in the lead. Dave Despain, what do you have down in the pits? Well, the big story in the pits right now is chassis adjustments. Here you see Allison coming back in, and I'm sure that they're going to make him take that sheet metal off the back. That bumper hanging out there is a bit dangerous. It's reminiscent of the year that he lost the bumper at Daytona and set off a big crash. Here it comes off as they go to work on that. But the story here has been chassis adjustments. Allison was in under green just before this yellow, and they made chassis adjustments on the car and put on fresh tires to try to get that car to handle. All of the crews that we've seen with their cars sliding around up at the top of the racetrack have been in inside the car, screwing on the little jack screw that shifts the weight around in the car. That's one of the ways that you change the line that the car can hold on the racetrack. 
Benny, you've said several times that everybody wants to be able to run on the bottom. What they're doing down here under the yellow flag is bringing the car in, quickly getting inside of it, a couple of turns on that screw, send the driver back out, and hope that that weight shift will make the car work better down low. And it's not uncommon to see a dramatic change in the handling of a given car after just one pit stop. They're about to go back to green. As they come down, it will be Bonnet in first, Waltrip in second, Bodine is in third, Bouchard is in fourth, Petty is in fifth, and back in the sixth position, Rusty Wallace. Seventh is Labonte, eighth is the Richard Brooks car. Ninth, Ricky Rudd. Those are the front nine, all in that lead lap as they come down on a turn number four. The Good. tenth place car is right behind the leader. That is Kyle Petty. Neil Bonnet staying first. Kyle Petty is running real well right now again. He's trying to get that lap back. Kyle Petty's Ford, number seven. There you see him on the tail end of the lead lap. A few sparks off the back end of car number 11. Waltrip still second. I think where you're going to see the battle begin to develop is that number 47 of Bouchard, the one you were pointing out earlier, Benny. I think you're right. I think that he is going to give Jeff Bodine a little trouble. Dave Marcus is getting in some trouble right now. Front four automobiles in turn number one. We now have 167 laps of 420 completed as they come by. Car number 27. Bad day for Tim Richmond. All torn up on the nose. Back behind the pit wall, Tim Richmond's car. And here you see Tim taking off the helmet. He'd like to be out here dishing it out right now. He really would. Torn up front and back, car number 27, the Pontiac of Tim Richmond. Darrell Walter managed to get by Kyle Petty and now had his eyes on Neil Bonnet. Look at that, just two cars out. We broached the halfway mark in this race. The durability that we've been getting all races this year in Grand National is unbelievable. Uh, and Richmond, the other race at TBS uh, showed, I don't think three or, four, but three or four cars fell out of the race, Ken. Bobby Allison having his problems here tonight. Let's go to Jerry Garrett for this quick report. Tim, Tim Richmond, what happened to your car? I'm not sure. The thing's been running hot and drip, dropping uh, water on the track. We even have to run it high to keep the car under us anyway. And I think some water just got on the tire and spun it up off, a, up off the two and hit the wall. And whether it hit it or not, it probably wouldn't have been able to finish the race if it was running so hot. He's definitely out right now. A frustrated Tim Richmond who really wanted to do well here at Nashville, Tennessee. You know, coming off his win at North Wilkesboro, I guess he felt like he really had things going on the short track. So I can understand his disappointment, Kim. Meanwhile, Darrell Waltrip is, uh, he's gained on Neil Bonnet. He's right behind him, 12 and 11. He thinks the number sequence is all wrong. He wants to be 11 and 12. There's Bobby Allison with a car number 22. Bobby. Does it get a little rough out here at this Nashville Fairgrounds? If you do rub a fender, you can't let that bother you. If another guy rubs you as long as he doesn't keep pushing, you can't let that bother you either. I wonder what he says when they try to jerk your rear bumper off. <laughs> it is a physical racetrack. You can't come out of here with your car unscarred. It just gets a lot of abuse here, and you have to shoulder, you have to use some muscle if you intend to get through traffic. That's exactly right. And you know, that's the problem that Darrell Walton's got right now. He's got the 12 car, his sister car in front of him. He can't really lean on that car like he could if it was Jeff Bodine. Here comes Waltrip. Waltrip looks like he's ready to make a move. He had a car that was ill handling a little while ago, and now he looks like he's ready to strike here, Benny. Yeah, it looks like he's adjusted on the car. He's done something because the car seems to be handling much better than it did before the caution play. Clark Dwyer belching a little smoke as the two leaders come off turn number two. And it looks like Waltrip is there and game to go for it. I don't know how those pit crews tell those cars apart as they come down pit road because they look identical to me, Ken. Waltrip has won this spring race four times. Trying to win it three in a row now. Last two years, he's won it by a lap. Here he is closing in once again on Neil Bonnet. Bonnet, just a little defensive right here, Benny. Oh, I see the way they tell the difference. See the, the red stripe on the top of the grill on the 12 car? <laughs> That's the way they tell the difference. <laughs> Thank goodness for television. Waltrip with seven Grand National wins here in Nashville, tied at seven with the great Kaylee Arborough, trying to make it eight. 
Here's Dave Despain. Darrell Waltrip is going after Neil Bonnet most assuredly here, Ken. One of the keys is the chassis adjustments that we talked about on the pit stops. They were into both of those cars making adjustments. Yes, they're team cars. Here's Waltrip's got the low side with a blocked car for a pick. No, he gets trapped by that slower car and will have to hold his position. They have made chassis adjustments on those two cars, but Waltrip knows it's time to get around Bonnet. There is a five-point bonus to the man who leads the most laps. Waltrip is the current Winston Cup point leader, and he told us earlier today on Motor Week Illustrated, please don't call me former Grand National Champion. He said, I want that title back this year. His adversary last year, Bobby Allison, is definitely back in the pack. And right now, I think Waltrip wants to lead because he wants those five bonus points. He's going after Neil Bonnet. Rip snorter of a battle for first place, lapping DK Ulrich down the back straightaway. Bonnet is there. Waltrip trying to close ground another time, and Bodine stays right in it through the pit stops, through all of the activity in the lap cars. Jeff Bodine hangs on and tries to get his second Grand National win. He's geared for it. He is geared. I think right now Neil Bonnet is holding up the train just a little bit. I think both Waltrip and Bodine could outrun Bonnet if they could get by him. But getting by him, that's going to be the problem. So as matters stand, you see the leader, Neil Bonnet, with Waltrip in second, Bodine in third, Bouchard is fourth, Richard Petty is in fifth at the Nashville 420. Eastbound right now, but as he swings through one and two, he'll be westbound. Neil Bonnet has got some breathing room back here at Nashville on Saturday night, May 12th. What a celebration of speed in this 5 8 mile track. This thing has really got me confused. A moment ago, I thought Neil Bonnet was holding up Darrell Walter. And then, no sooner did the words come out of my mouth than Neil Bonnet drove away, and Darrell Waltrip seems to be holding up Jeff Bodine. So it, the race just seems to come and go, Ken. Bonnet held up his cast, waved bye-bye to Darrell Waltrip in second place and scooted out to a 15-car length advantage. There he is, Bonnet trying to hold on, and there you see the cars in second and third. There's Waltrip and Jeff Bodine right there with Jimmy Means on the outside. And the 47 car, Ron Bouchard, is gaining on him. And He's here's the battle back there for sixth position. That's car number 15, Ricky Rudd, the winner at Richmond, right behind him, the 88 of Rusty Wallace, and in between the 75, the lap car of Dave Marcus. Look at Rusty Wallace in that Cliff Stewart, number 88, using the inside of the track, trying to pull around Marcus and take a shot at car number 15, Ricky Rudd. Rusty Wallace, former ASA champion, running for Rookie of the Year. One of the best runs that, that Rusty Wallace has had this year. His kind of racetrack. Here with Harry Gant's car looking out the back for a moment. Moving up. Look out. Here comes Bodine. Jeff Bodine in car number five is beginning to look like he really wants to do some business. Bodine in number five as we watch that 88 of Rusty Wallace working to lap Harry Gant. What a nice night for Rusty Wallace. Midwestern driver. A lot of spark, a lot of savvy. Bodine Here's, has got by Darrell Waltrip again, and he's driving away from him. Yes, he is. He's driving away. Waltrip was holding up. He was. Bonnet Darryl. was pulling away. Waltrip seems to be off the pace, and what's happening now is Bouchard is closing on Waltrip. Waltrip is in third. Ron Bouchard is pulling up. But watch this number five. That Spurlock car, all-star racing team. That team has only been in existence six months. Harry Hyde, the grand old Kentucky master. The crew chief on that machine thinks he has the perfect setup. He picked a crew of relative unknowns. Didn't buy any high buck folks to work on the on the car. One was a farmer. One was a truck driver. Now car number 12, Bonnet, is beginning to feel some new pressure out here. Neil Bonnet stays out in front, driving with a cast on his right arm. Is driving with a cast difficult out here? Would it affect his racing? Well, it's not going to alter it any. I, I, it altered the preparation of the race car. When I broke my wrist uh, uh, about three weeks ago, I've never used power steering on a car. This particular car here has power steering on it. I'm probably going to have to use it in most of the races until my wrist gets well. The power steering seems to be an a asset to most of the drivers. 80% of the cars here have them on there. They're pretty well bulletproof. And as far as my hand, it doesn't hurt a bit. I can use it just as well as before. So that shouldn't be a factor in the race. There you see him. Bodine in that second spot and Neil Bonnet the man that was just telling me about driving with a cast on your right arm at 120 miles an hour averaging over 100 miles per hour per lap staying out in front Neil Bonnet 
13 Grand National wins, looking for number 14 right here tonight in this $200,000 plus event, which is getting close to halfway. 198 laps now complete. How do you feel out here on a track like this at this distance, Ben? Well, right now you feel pretty good. It's a very warm night. Right now you feel pretty good. About 300 laps is when you start feeling it. You want the thing to get over, especially some of the guys like Joe Rutman, Harry again, the people that are having a rut. Bobby Allison, he wants the thing to be over right now because he's had enough. Dave Despain, one of the stories that we're kind of interested in up here is what's happening with car number 15, Ricky Rudd. He falls back a bit here at this time in the race, and uh, he had made such a good run earlier in the event. So get any information about that, pass it along, Dave. Ken, that's one of two stories that we're checking on right now. The other one is the Daryl Waltrip story. They definitely have a problem, and they won't say what it is. We asked Jeff Hammond, do you have a problem? And he nodded, and we said, what is the problem? And he shook his head. They don't want to talk about it, but the number 11 crew is in trouble, and they may come to the pits. That's going to give this man, number 12, Neil Bonnet, a real run at it here. Meantime, we're trying to get from Bud Moore some further information on the number 15 car of Ricky Rudd. There are tires ready in the Darrell Waltrip pit. The speculation is that they got a bad set of tires on the last stop, and they're going to have to make a green flag stop to change those tires. They could gamble and hope for a yellow flag, but the way the leader, number 12, Bonnet, is running, they would be in danger of going a lap down if they took that chance, and they can't afford that. 200 laps are now complete. Sterling Marlin getting lapped. One over 40 sportsman races on this very track. Bonnet goes down to, to turn number one leading, and here's the story. Some of that pressure that Darrell Waltrip is feeling right now is not just from the car, but it's the man breathing down the rear bumper. Number 47, Ron Bouchard is there. And Darrell Waltrip don't need that pressure because he's got all the pressure he can stand right now trying to get that 11 car around the racetrack as well as Neil Bonnet, his sister car. But he's unable to do that. Dave Despain mentioned a bad set of tires. What he means by that, Ken, is that the sizing is wrong. They put the tires on there, and somehow the sizing, as the tires get hot and start growing, they don't grow consistently, so one gets bigger than the other, and it affects the chassis. Ron Bouchard out of Fitchburg, Massachusetts, the BB car, Race Hill Farm, looking good here at Nashville, Tennessee, with 206 laps now complete, and that car is running in the fourth position continues to close on what appears to be an ill-handling Darrell Waltrip, car number 11. He's won two races this year. Can Waltrip come back, win his third for the year? We'll find out shortly. <laughs> 214 laps are complete here at Nashville, Tennessee, and you'd have a hard time finding any Saints that want to be running with these people tonight, Benny. I guarantee you. They're too dangerous for the Saints. There are nine cars now running in the lead lap as we move toward the halfway point. And some 19 cars are still up in the heavy scoring that uh, Bob Latford's been passing along to us. The nine cars up in front as they're averaging 83 miles an hour. It still is Neil Bonnet in that first position. Jeff Bodine is in second. Darrell Waltrip maintaining third. Ron Bouchard in fourth. Richard Petty is in fifth. Terry Labonte is your sixth place runner. Ricky Rudd is in seventh. Rusty Wallace, what an outstanding job he's doing in eighth. Then comes Dick Brooks in ninth. The lap down is Kyle Petty in tenth. And then we see back in the eleventh position the car number 71, Mike Alexander, who's a runner who knows this track well. He's had a couple of track championships here, Benny. Mike Alexander is many, many wins at this racetrack. Although 3,700 pound car, he's not used to it at this racetrack. He's having a little bit of problem adjusting to it tonight, Ken. There's number 12, Bonnet, very low on the racetrack, coming out of that corner, just hanging it down and looking like he's going so easily and yet that's about 90 95 miles per hour how about it Dave Despain Darrell Waltrip is definitely losing ground he's gone back to 30 been at the top of the leaderboard through most of the night they won't say what the problem is Kent but it looks grim they are speculation there may be something wrong with the motor on Waltrip's car they're staying out there hoping for a yellow to get in check it out and they're also worried about a tire problem we had expected to see Ricky Rudd up here he started second he was the man that Darrell Waltrip most feared tonight we put the question to Bud Moore is there a problem he said yes we asked him the same question that we asked Jeff Hammond earlier what is that problem he smiled and he said I won't tell you but I'll tell you it's not too serious Bud Moore thinks they could get back into it in the number 15 car for Ricky Rudd we're inside of Harry Gantz automobile hard long night for handsome Harry coming back out of the track car number 33 that's two unscheduled pit stops in the last 10 laps again so skull bandit well down he had been running in 14th and that'll cost him another lap and put him down around 19th or 20th 
This has pretty much been a Chevrolet track over the years. In Grand National Racing, Chevrolets have won here on 16 occasions, Plymouth eight times. Ford has had six wins. The last race on this track, last July for Grand National, Ford won it, that time with Dale Earnhardt at the keyboard. Buick has three wins, Olds three, Dodge three, and Pontiac one. The last time Darrell Waltrip lost this race, it was to a Ford. And I remember it well. You know why? Why? I was driving the Ford. <laughs> Benny Parsons with us, the man who won the Coca-Cola 500 at Atlanta International Raceway this year in the Leo Jackson car. What's your next race, Benny? In Charlotte, the World 600, two weeks to time, Ken. I understand that they are 40% like ahead in tickets. Coming up next, of course, is Dover, Delaware, and then on to the World 600 in Charlotte for the Winston Cup Grand National Tour. Now car number 47. Here is Ron Bouchard. The gentleman from Fitchburg, Mass, who wanted a photo finish at Talladega a couple of years ago. He's always been strong on short tracks. Let's see what he's going to do here. You see him drop down on the inside. Bouchard cut his teeth at the Stafford Spring Speedway in Connecticut, not too far from Fitchburg from where he is. Fitchburg in the center of the Massachusetts state. He used to travel about 45 minutes down there, and he won some 30, 40 races. Got his opportunity when Harry Gant moved on to the Skull Bandit team to move in and drive for Bob Johnson with car number 47. He was making a pretty serious run on Darrell Walker a moment ago, but... No, he lost his handle just a little bit and he stopped gaining. He hadn't lost too much of Darrell Walton, but he stopped gaining. The fairgrounds at Nashville on this Saturday night, May 12th, and you're watching Flag to Flag coverage on WTBS as Neil Bonnet goes down to the inside looking for that 14th win. There he is again under Trevor Boyce. Driving with a cast from his thumb back about a foot onto his arm, and that has to weigh heavy as the evening wears on. It really does. And, you know, we were talking about power steering a moment ago. I heard some conversation down the pit area about them taking power steering off Neil Bonnet's car because they, they felt like it was hurting their performance getting around the racetrack. I know I talked to Darrell Waltrip and Ricky Rudd. Both those cars came here with power steering on their car, but both of them disconnected, took it off, and went to normal steering, manual steering. Car number 12 staying in front. Now you're looking at number three. Pulling around Richard Petty's number 43, trying to make up a lap. That's Richard Petty in the fifth position. Dale Earnhardt's car number three. Dale, you won this race with a Ford last July. Can you win it with a Chevrolet? I won it here before in a Chevy in 1980, so, and Darrell's won it several times in a Chevy, so, you know, it shouldn't really make no difference. Uh, I feel like uh, if we get the right setup under the car and our car's running pretty good in practice, uh, you know, we should have a real good shot at winning the race if you can stay out of trouble here. Well, he's had some trouble, and he's running several laps down now. He had serious trouble. They had to change the distributor in that car again, and that's probably 15, 20 laps anyway. Heartbreak for Earnhardt. Petty. You see Petty get a little bit loose behind Earnhardt that sure time? Did. Just slipping and sliding, trying to get around the racetrack without hitting anything. That's about all they can do right now. Not so much Nashville music, but more Simon and Garfunkel. Slip sliding away, Richard Petty here back in fifth position and falling back a bit, and his son, Kyle Petty, is closing up on him. We could get to see a father and son confrontation. Nashville is the only track on the Winston Tour where they have a lot of track champions running they come to town. Darrell Waltrip was a former track champion here. Jimmy Means, that driver you see out here at number 52, getting lapped a few times, he won a championship in a lot of races at Nashville. Sterling Marlin, of course, and Mike Alexander all involved. A real center of racing is this Nashville track. Here's the number 11 car of Daryl Waltrip. He's running third, further to his situation. You recall early in the race, the first set of tires on that car overheated badly. They were worried about the heat of the tires. On this long string of green flag racing here, Waltrip has the same problem. He moved up, he challenged Neil Bonnet for the lead. It looked like he was going to the front. Then he slowed down dramatically. There was a lot of speculation about the problem. Junior Johnson says that the problem is that the tires are overheating. There is Junior watching his man pick up the pace again. What Waltrip did was slow down. That cools the tires. Now he's ready to run at full speed again. He's hoping to charge back up and catch the leaders. Quick word on the number 33 car, our in-car camera. 47 getting through, David. There he goes. That's Bouchard. He's going to lose that spot, Kenley. But I think the key for Waltrip is that the tires are cool enough now that he can at least race with Bouchard. They're hoping to 
get in and get a tire change on the number 11 of Darrell Waltrip so that that Junior Johnson car can continue its dominance here in this race. 16,000 sold out crowd on their feet here at Nashville. They're going to add some new stands, we understand, in the future because they just turned away literally thousands of people who wanted to be here tonight in Nashville, Tennessee to see this. And look at Bouchard draw. They have a spin in turn number two. Car in the wall right at the same point where that is uh, Ronnie Thomas surrounding it. Ooh, just getting beneath him. That's about 90, 95 miles an hour. He was blessed. He was, and, and Joe Rutman and Neil Bonnet was trying to race back to the flag, and, and Ronnie Thomas was there, and the caution flag is out, but it was a very, very close. 37-year-old Neil Bonnet has the lead. What will he do here? Caution is on the track. Tell you what he's going to do. He's going to come in the pits and get four tires just as quick as he can. But so is everybody else. Let's pause for this message right now in our live coverage from Nashville. The old truck driver, Tommy Gale, who nearly retired this year, car number 64, showing a lot of smoke. He just got beaten up on pit road. On pit road, you know, Davis Payne talked about it at the opening of the show. Just how crowded, just how narrow it is. A car pulled out in front of Tommy, I pulled out in front of Kyle Petty. Kyle stopped, Tommy Gale couldn't. Bam, in the back of Kyle Petty. And Tommy's got to go in the pits and get the fenders knocked off the tires now. The Sonny King car, number 64, prepared by Almo Langley running in the 22nd position. 24 cars of the 30 machines are still on the track. We're getting ready for a start. I think we may see what happened. Here's Kyle, here's Kyle Petty coming out. The 88 of Rusty Wallace got in front of him and poor Tommy Gale. No place to go. No place to go. Except All right, we're ready for a restart. And as they come down after the caution, here's how they run. Bonnet is first. And Ron Bouchard is in second. And he gets ridden a little high as they go down by Dale Earnhardt in car number three. He really did. I tell you what, I don't know what Earnhardt was doing, but he should give Ron Bouchard the opportunity to go up and race Neil Bonnet. They trade some more sheet metal up here in turn number four. Main straightaway, Bouchard up in the second. The third place car is number five, Bodine. The fourth place is Terry Labonte, and back in fifth is Waltrip. That's the story. Something's amiss with Waltrip tonight. Oh, he spent forever in the pits, just forever in the pits, so they must have been made some serious adjustments back there. Here's Jerry Garrett. Ken, when they took the tires off, they took all four tires off Waltrip's car. They marked the set that they had no good. So there apparently was a problem with those tires. I don't know if there's still another problem because their crew chief isn't talking. Well, back straight away. There you see him. Jeff Lemon isn't talking. Well, I guess after all the, the way Darrell Waltrip has dominated this race for the past few years, I'm sure they're very disappointed. Mums the word out of Jeff Hammond. The Warner Hodgson team wondering what they're going to do with car number 11 as you see it dance its way down into the corner. Meanwhile, Bouchard is closing up. Up in front, Ron Bouchard in car number 47. Here's Richard Petty back there working on Darrell Waltrip. And there's Ron Bouchard working on Neil Bonnet. That's a dandy one. Been a great race all night. You're watching it here, flag to flag coverage on this Saturday night, May 12th, coming to you from Nashville, Tennessee, on Superstation WTBS. First night race, full flag to flag coverage, along with Atlanta and Pittsburgh and baseball, all here on WTBS. And of course, the end of the year, we'll be with you at Atlanta, Georgia, and then on to Riverside, California, on the Superstation. Car number 12, maintaining that lead, Bonnet looking for win number 14. Tommy I'm really amazed. Car, I'm really amazed, Ken, at the just what a beautiful, beautiful pitcher we're getting tonight. Uh, in the night race, I felt like that we'd probably get an inferior pitcher, but it's super. They've added a few lights here, but this is a well-lit racetrack. A lot of night racing makes the cars look like they're going about 200 miles an hour because of the shadows. Not so true here, but you still get a feeling for the incredible speed these cars develop. 120 mile an hour straightaway on a 5 8 mile track. That's really barking. Ron Bouchard, where is the best place to pass at Nashville with your short track experience? Corners or straightaways? I think the best place as the race gets going is if you can come up off the corner good, you can get under somebody, and that's really the best place. If you can get the fender up under them, you can beat them to the corner. 
Ron Bouchard. Nice yeah. Massachusetts accent mixed in there with all that Southern draw. I told him not to say "ca" during that interview <laughs> yesterday. But Here's he Dave get that fender. Further to that Darrell Waltrip story, Ken, they changed four tires. They definitely had a bad set of tires, but Darrell Waltrip's car number 11 also got a major chassis adjustment during that pit stop, and what they tried to do was tighten up the car. Now, that Benny Parsons could write us a book on the difference between tight and loose. As we watch Waltrip circulate here, the speculation as to whether or not the tightening move has helped. Basically, what that enables the car to do is turn more sharply, run tighter at the bottom of the racetrack. The other thing that it does is reduces the wheel spin on that right rear, and they're hopeful that will keep the tires from heating up as they've been having problems with all night. Waltrip is buried back in fifth place. This is going to be a crucial run of green flag racing for the man who dominates this racetrack. He's got to make a move. He's got to get the right handling setup and get himself back up to do battle with his teammate number 12, Neil Bonnet, and the number 47 of Ron Bouchard, which is really the story right now. So they continue to administer to number 11, but he stays stable in fifth position, and the battle is right here for the lead as it has been. The cautions have been miraculous tonight. We've had a series of spins which have given them the opportunity to take on new rubber and run well, and it's kept the leaders together. There you see the report on those out of the race. Only four cars have officially retired from the 30 that started and were 249 laps deep into this 420-lap race. Neil Bonnet now leading. His best finish this year was fourth at Daytona. Holding on up in front. Nearly won at Richmond, as you'll remember, in a broadcast you saw on WTBS. Ron Bouchard steady in that second position. And he gets just a tad squirrely as he came off the corner that time. Yeah, I noticed him a couple of laps ago, just a little bit squirrely. You know, Dave Spain was talking about Darrell Waltrip and the adjustments he had made trying to get the car to quit spinning the tires as he came off the corner. While he was talking about it, I was watching Daryl on the monitor here in the booth, and it's not working, Dave. He's still slipping as he gets off the corner. He's still spinning that right rear tire and getting just a little bit sideways as he comes off the turns. In this race, Bonnet has been here three previous occasions. Last year, he wound up in the 13th position after starting on the outside. But in 1982 and back in 1978, fifth both times. Bouchard, this is his third performance at Nashville, Tennessee in this 420. He has a ninth place finish a year ago and a third place finish to his credit. Both times he was not in the lead lap. And there's the invincible Junior Johnson looking on one of his cars in first place, one of them in fifth. And his cars have won more races here than any other builder of racing machinery. Junior Johnson, who knows all the mysteries. He really does. I wish I knew what was half, what was in that head. Lap car in front, lap traffic in front, and a lot of smoke bellowing from number 41, Ronnie Thomas, as Bonnet needle noses his way through out of turn number two. Welcome to WTBS and our flag to fly coverage on this Saturday night from Nashville, Tennessee, on the 5 8 high bank asphalt here. Neil Bonnet looking for his first win of the season. He's starting to pull away from Ron Bouchard just a little bit. He's only three or four car lengths ahead, but a moment ago he was only a car length ahead. Buddy Arrington who still hangs it out there for the Chrysler Corporation. Keeps on trying with those cars over the years. Here's Bonnet back in the main straightaway. The average speed we saw just a moment ago, Ken, that's pretty doggone quick for Nashville, Tennessee, because we usually have a rash of, rash of caution flags. Just, you know, every once in a while we got a crash and crash, and it's probably 60, 70 miles an hour would be average, but I know it's 80 miles an hour. That's pretty doggone good. Now look at number three. That's the Richard Childress car with Dale Earnhardt. That Chevrolet is pulled back up that laps down is car number three, being shown in 23rd position overall on the field. He's several, many laps down. Well, he's trying to impress the people back home. He wants everybody to know that that Wrangler Chevrolet would have been in there for the battle for the lead if he hadn't had a distributor. Problem. 256 laps now complete. Dandy race tonight. Bonnet. It's been a race all night, hasn't it? A hasn't race for stopped. The lead. Hasn't stopped. And when you think how many times this has been won by a lap or two, and nobody's getting away out here this evening. There's Bouchard right there in second spot. Bonnet getting just a bit of an advantage. Ron Bouchard. What's more important when you run at a track like Nashville, Ron? Is it the chassis or is it the motor? What makes the difference in winning here at Nashville? 
chassis, I believe. Uh, the motor isn't really going to do the job in the race. You have to have a chassis that's going to work well and get you up off the corner, I think, is the most important thing here. Waltrip is beginning to close up a little. The 11 and the 44 are beginning to do a little running. Here's the battle. It's back there and forth. Waltrip is on the outside. Terry Lavani is on the inside. And the Dale Inman car, number 44, the Billy Hagen machine, falls back. And Waltrip looks like he has found the key. He looks like he is getting around the racetrack much better than it was a few minutes ago. So and now give that position to Darrell Waltrip. Give him fourth. And here comes Richard Petty. Richard Petty working for fifth position on Terry Labonte's number 44 and almost had him off the corner. And right behind him, the 88 car and the 15 car is racing Richard Petty. We've got a great race back there, Ken. Back in ninth remains Richard Brooks. And in tenth, it stays Kyle Petty. Lapping Clark Dwyer another time. First turn. Labonte, Petty trying to get just a tad lower. And there is Ricky Rudd's number 15, the Budmore Ford, rumbling right along and down the back straightaway. Terry Labonte has completely lost the handle. He really has lost, completely lost the handle. There. Petty he's, goes he's into coming the pits. Pit. And Terry Labonte, number 44, will pit. Terry Labonte comes onto pit road. Give Petty fifth. Rudd six. Wallace seventh. Pit activity going on for car number 44, Terry Labonte. And Texas Terry Labonte, with a couple of wins to his credit, Trying to get this car straightened away and back in the event. Made a tire change, as you saw, and away he comes. Goes down the lap. There's Richard, Richard Petty going around him again. Petty now fifth, 43, 15, 6. Rusty Wallace in seventh. Neil Bonnet. Can he stay there? Can he stop the Waltrip Panzer attack on this track? He has been the story of this race. Benny? There's a race for second place right now. Jeff Bodine is alongside Ron Bouchard going in turn three. He's trying to take over second place. They're catching Bill Elliott in the nine car. Bill's trying to get out of the way, but he can't make it quite in time. Elliott hammered earlier in the race. He's well off the pace. He's had some problems here tonight. He is not shown in the top 15. So there you have the two guys from up from down east. One from Massachusetts. Well, actually, Jeff Bodine spent a long time around the Massachusetts area. Had a racing team there for Dick Armstrong. And he takes a bit of the back off car number 47. He really Tagged did. him. A really stout shot. This looks like an old Friday night boxing smoker here, or one from the old days at the St. Nick's Arena as they begin to trade some sheet metal and some blows out here with these 3,700-pound stock cars in this $200,000 event. Side by side once more. There's Jimmy Means just in front. He moves over, and Bodine gives a bit of the bumper to his old pal, Ron Bouchard. They've raced together for about 10 years. They grew up together in racing, more or less. Bodine out of Chemung, New York, where his dad owned the racetrack. Ron Bouchard, his dad was a trucker in Fitchburg, Massachusetts. And that kid, from the time he was old enough to walk, was around, hanging around racetracks. In the old days, the Norwood Arena in Massachusetts. He was Here talking a moment ago, Ken, about getting a fender up under a car, getting off the corner. Well, right now, he's getting a fender put under him in <laughs> off the corner. Ron Bouchard getting right down there and hanging on to Sterling Marlin. He doesn't want to get any kind of daylight in there to give Bodine that old Allison shot where you work off the lap car and go right through the middle. Exactly. There's Bouchard currently in second place. Sterling Marlin, who really thought with this brand new team and this new car, he was going to do well here tonight. He's had a tremendous number of victories on this track, but it hasn't gone for Sterling Marlin a tall backwards almost all night. You know, I think he's won about 44 races, something like that. You're getting. As a matter of fact, we were talking about it. We said 44. He said he thought it was 45. Darrell Waltrip said he won so many races here, they stopped counting. Gets <laughs> credit for 61, plus a USAC victory here, which was one that he enjoyed the most over the Uncers, the John Cox, and all a few years ago. But in Grand National Racing, he has been just about unbeatable on this track. Knows it like the way to Franklin, Tennessee, just down the road where Darrell Waltrip lives. Back straight away, looking at the battle for second place. Jeff Bodine in the car number five. All the tracks that NASCAR race on provide for tough driver competition. Jeff, give us a comment on that. You know, this track here is, is like any super speedway or any short track in a circuit. You've got to go out there and pace yourself. It's a long race, 420 laps. Uh, it's a tough race track. You can get in trouble here real easy. You, you've got to save your car. you got to save yourself. And 
you know, pace yourself. And the only important laps are the last couple, the last one, really, when you get to check a flag. He's waiting in third position. Car number five, Jeff Bodine, the young man just talking to you, driving with a fractured shoulder blade from a crunch at 200 miles an hour into the concrete at Talladega, Alabama, just six days ago. Dave Despain, what do you have for us? This battle that we're watching between Jeff Bodine, number five, and number 47, Ron Bouchard, about five seconds behind the leader, number 12, Neil Bonnet. And it is holding steady. Bonnet isn't pulling away, but neither are these guys able to close. A couple of seconds behind the number five car of Bodine is Darrell Waltrip, the free race favorite. He's about seven seconds behind the leader, and he's holding his own. He picked up a couple of spots. We asked his crew if the car was handling better. They said, nah, but the other guys are handling worse, so we're able to pick up a couple of positions. Waltrip is not happy. These guys are doing battle about five seconds behind the leader. It's only seven seconds from first back to fourth. What's the visibility on a track like this? 18 degree banking, very short straightaways, and you're right back up on the turn again. What do you see out here, Benny? You don't see too much. All you see is, is about 50, 60 yards directly in front of you until you get off the turn on the straightaway. You have complete visibility of the entire straightaway, and going in the next turn, you can see at least half of it. But once you get in that turn, the visibility goes completely away. There you see the distance remaining in the event on this 5 8 mile track as you watch Darrell Waltrip currently sequestered in the fourth position on the field and he's about to lap Bobby Allison. Twice Grand National Champion Waltrip who's had those great wars with Allison over the years trying to put a lap on him and it is not Allison's night. Charlie Roberts down the pit has a story Charlie. Doug Richard Neil Bonnet seems to be having a fairly easy time of it right now. Is everything going according to schedule? Well the car is driving real well. Uh, earlier in the race we were able to change two tires and, and get up into the Bonnet stays in front and we'll check the interval for you back to the second place car Bouchard who looks like he has his car working very well here tonight. Rusty Wallace stays right in the hunt. Wallace now being shown in the sixth position. This will be his best finish of the year if he can stay up there. It will be by far his best finish. Rusty's had a lot. It seems to have had a lot of problems getting acclimated to the Grand National type of racing. He comes from the ASA the 27 2800 pound cars out of the Midwest to NASCAR to Grand National Racing where we got 3700 pounds big difference. Why so much weight on these cars like this number 12 of Neil Bonnet in the lead. Well you know we've asked NASCAR the same question again and we don't seem to get uh, a good answer when they shortened the cars or made the cars smaller three or four years ago we felt like that it should have went to 34 3500 pounds because that's what it takes to make the cars safe is at least 34 3500 pounds. But NASCAR said no we want to be super safe 3700 pounds that will remain. Car number 12 there's Junior Johnson looking on really excited isn't he <laughs> never changes his expression does he no. even when it goes totally bad that's still the same man Junior Johnson. You there's know that's exactly right that is a good point Ken. if that car was three laps down the expression would be exactly the same. Neil Bonnet currently eighth in the standings. The standings are pretty jumbled and the way Waltrip is running tonight they may be more jumbled. Bill Elliott currently second in the standings is having not a particularly good night. He had trouble early in the race and uh, is back out of the top 15 so he may tumble considerably. And of course next Sunday they move to the Monster Mile at Dover Delaware. From there it's on to the Sunday Memorial Day performance in the World 600 then out west Riverside California upcoming is Michigan Pocono Pennsylvania the month of June and the 4th of July back to the World Center of Speed in Daytona Beach Florida for these cars in their 10 million dollar quest. Remember when stock cars used to how much did you get when you first started driving. Remember the first race you ever won Benny Parsons first race I ever won. Oh I probably paid seventy five dollars. You know but my car only paid, cost fifty so it wasn't a bad deal. These cars today cost 60,000 and they can win about 30. So I was probably better off. Ron Bouchard in the second position. Jeff Bodine in third chasing this man car number 12 Neil Bonnet breaks 3,700 pound car load up dive down in these corners. They must take a lot of beating out here. They take a tremendous beating in uh, and we went to disc brakes about oh I don't know seven eight years ago and that was the greatest thing that ever happened to Grand National Racing was disc brakes. 
There you see once again second place Bouchard and Bodine the nor'easter storm continuing to charge up through here. Are you saying that exactly right. Oh yeah nor'easter. I thought it was northeastern. Oh no not up there. There's no such thing as a TH. Oh well. <laughs> Back straight away car number 11. Car number 11 stays up there. Field rolling. Here he comes down to the inside. Field rolls down to the inside and they continue to move. Most Darryl Walton speedways trying. because of the traffic, the tightness of the track. You don't have a lot of room to race and you don't have those long straightaways to kind of loosen up a little bit, shake yourself and relax. Constantly under pressure here from either passing cars or cars racing you. So it's demanding, probably more demanding than most of the speedways that we run, super speedways. That, in answer to the question about which is more demanding, running a super speedway or a, a track like this? Well, it is much, much more demanding on the short track like this, again, Because as you can see, there's Bobby Allison and Dave Marcus in front of him. Darrell wants it. He wants to make it three abreast. <laughs> but he didn't. And he's having trouble getting by some cars which are running further back now. So there are still problems. Still has problems. Oh, look at Marcus. Oh. Bobby Allison moved Dave Marcus way up. Up in turn number three and four. Beginning to get into it. Those kids from. The Norris section there's five and forty seven going for second spot down at a turn number one Bouchard on the outside Bodine in the number five on the inside wheel to wheel a couple of laps to this will get your attention. Oh, oh, oh. You said they've been doing this all their life though right. These two in particular. And that was in the open wheel modified ranks where if you touch somebody it's. Long time before you hit the ground again get up over somebody's wheel. Down on the inside, car number five on the outside, Bouchard. Could be the race of the night right here. Two guys in the same part of the country. Bouchard might have found him a groove up on the top side, Ken. He's getting the job done up there. He's Ken, as these two guys do battle, Bouchard putting the move on the outside of Jeff Bodine in that race for second spot. But as they do battle, they are losing ground to the leader, Neil Bonnet. He's opened up now about seven seconds over the second place battle and significantly Daryl Waltrip has now fallen ten and a half seconds behind this man his teammate Bonnet Bonnet is really in command of this race but you kind of get feelings about the way the races are going they run a long long time under green these cars have been under a tremendous amount of stress I have the feeling Ken that we're about to see yellow and when that happens it's going to bunch everything up and then you're really going to see a battle. As the tires go away, somebody gets a little high, they're apt to scoot right up to the wall and bring out a caution flag. Neil Bonnet in first. He don't look like his tires are going away. Uh -uh. They're just staying the same. But you know, we talked about uh, Darrell Walter losing the streak. You know, those cars come from the same shop. For all we know, that might be Darrell Walter's car from last year, that 12 car. The 43 car, Richard Petty. Right there, Petty is beginning to move in on car number 11, Waltrip. Number 11, Waltrip is beginning to feel some pressure from Richard Petty in number 43. Petty currently fifth. That would do Richard Petty a world of good. If he could beat Darrell Waltrip at this racetrack, I really think it would help Richard Petty. Really do. Going at it for fourth position. Car number 11, Waltrip is there. Petty trying to take it away and gaining a little ground off turn number two. Richard Petty. Still looking for 199 and trying to erase the blemish of victory number 198 at Charlotte, North Carolina in the 500 last fall. Back again, Bodine into second place. And 16,000 people galvanized to this battle here in Nashville, Tennessee on this Saturday night with our WTBS flag to fly coverage. The Grand National really coming through and giving us a performance. Nine cars still showing in the lead lap. Nine automobiles still in the lead lap. Car number 71, Mike Alexander about to go into the lap down. Mike Alexander has won a lot of races at this racetrack in. Probably 25 or 30 races. Bonnet sets it up. And remember, he is driving with a cast from his thumb back up his arm, almost to the elbow. Could we tell the people how he managed to break his thumb? Was Martins. holding the steering wheel of Martinsville. Uh, he went down in the corner. He was holding the steering wheel with a spoke. His thumb was resting on the spoke. He went down in the corner. The wheel hit the curb. 
jerked it out of his hand and broke the thumb. And he continued on. And continued on. And finished the race that day. Unbelievable story of uh, bravery, I guess. Well, it's that old true grit business. I mean, when you're in this business, you've got to go for it. Here's number 22, Bobby Allison on pit road. Allison comes in. Change of tires taking place right side for Bobby Allison. Not having a good night. Running in 14th position, two laps down at the present time. Here's Jerry Garrett. The problem that uh, Bobby Allison's been having is apparently handling too. He just changed those outside tires. He's been the one that's been holding up Darrell Walter for the last 20 laps and cost Walter all kinds of time. We'll have to see now Walter can draw back up on his teammate Neil Bonnet with, with Bobby Allison out of the way. Bobby Allison back on the track, lapping Buddy Arrington. Let's see if those new tires will work for him and try to pick him up some more positions. Still would like to get back up in that championship battle, no question about that. The championship standings going into tonight's race. Waltrip was first, Elliott second, Terry Labonte third, Dale Earnhardt fourth, Ricky Rudd fifth, Gant sixth, Richard Petty seventh, Bonnet eighth, Bobby Allison ninth, Ron Bouchard tenth, and just 235 points covering the top ten. Bob Lafford handed me a note a moment ago to tell me that Neil Bonnet has broken his wrist and not his thumb. Well, he really jammed the whole thing up with yeah, that right. deal up there at Martinsville. But right now, it's flawless for Neil Bonnet. He stays in front. 312 of the 420 laps have been completed at Nashville Fairgrounds tonight in the running of the Nashville 420. Neil Bonnet stays in front. From Music City, Nashville, Tennessee, Richard Petty looking for a little help, running in the fifth position, but running well. We asked Richard Petty earlier what Darrell Waltrip's advantage has been here of recent on the Nashville 5 8 mile track. Well, I don't know. Uh, you know, you always got to figure that Darrell has, has run here more than anybody else, and he's he's won here as much as anybody, and uh, even with the Grand National course. So, uh, you know, a Junior uh, has had awful good setup here. I mean, you know, you're talking about Kale. Kale drove for Junior in one race this year, and Darrell uh, in one races, and I guess his other drivers has won points. So. Junior's got good combinations on short tracks, so whoever's driving his car has got an awful uh, good chance to win a race anytime they go into it. Richard Petty in car number 43, chasing among others this man, car number 12, 37-year-old Neil Bonnet. Who is driving a Junior Johnson car? Indeed Richard Petty is. made an awfully good point. Car number 98, Joe Rutman about to go a lap down as Bonnet stays in front, the ex-pipe fitter, has it all fitting together thus far tonight. 320 laps complete, just 100 laps to go in our flag to flag coverage on this Saturday night, May 12th, coming to you from Nashville. The Grand National Stars still rolling better than 20 cars of the 30 that started around this 18 degree bank track. Average speed, staying we right have, up over 84 miles an hour. Again, we have a story from Charlie Roberts in the pits. Charlie. Benny, uh, just talk with Doug Richard, Neil Bonnet's crew chief. He says, Neil's got a slight cramp in his hand, but everything else is okay. We're with Harry Hyde, the second place crew chief, Jeff Bodine, running with an injured shoulder. Has Jeff told you how his shoulder feels and how his race is going? He's feeling real good, and uh, his time is real good. I think this next pitch stop is going to tell the tale, and uh, he talks real sharp. Jeff's feeling fine. Car's running good. Everything holds together. I think we'll come out all right. Do you think you can catch up to Neil Bonnet? Neil Bonnet. After this next pit stop, uh, we got some stuff laid up for him. Yes, I think we can catch him. There's the word from Harry Hyde. 46 times the winner of Grand National Races. Harry Hyde, the crew chief now on this brand new team. And boy, how that all-star racing organization has come together, Benny. Oh, it's amazing that this team started this year, Ken, so they've only been together for about 10 races. Planning began just last November. Exactly right. So. Uh, my hats off to C.K. Spurlock, Rick Hendrick, all the people connected with this team because the progress they've made has been phenomenal. Back straight away. Bodine, second place. Bouchard is in third. Waltrip is in fourth. Richard Petty is in fifth. We are now 323 of 400 laps complete at the Nashville Fairgrounds. Beautiful night. Just cool enough. Midway is going. The fans are having a wonderful time. Well, Dave Despain, how are things down in the STP Pit Center? 
Well, Ken, it's been a fascinating evening of changing fortunes for these guys. Bonnet's been in pretty good shape all night. His teammate, Darrell Waltrip, badly wants a pit stop. They think if they can get one good set of tires on car number 11, they can still catch Bonnet, even though they are now 13 seconds behind the leader. What they really want to come out with is a one-two sweep. There is Waltrip as he continues to charge. The weird thing about Waltrip's car is that the handling is just constantly changing. It'll work for a while, then the handle goes away. Bobby Allison, he chased for 20 laps, and he finally got around him, and then Allison just drove right back past him a couple of laps ago. Waltrip cannot figure out what's wrong with the car, but they have the feeling that if they could get one more set of tires, a yellow flag to get in and change the tires, that he could still win this race. Back in the ninth position, Terry Labonte, and he is now being shown a lap down, and in the tenth position is Dave Marcus. The eleventh position currently, they're now showing Kyle Petty's number seven as going a lap down and running in eleventh. And twelfth, still another lap back, is Mike Alexander. Bobby Allison is being shown in thirteenth. Dave Despain was talking. Darrell Walter wants to get in and put four tires because they probably have a set of tires saved. You know, they measure every tire that they get and they pick out the best set and they save them for the last 50, the last 100, or the last 20 laps. So that's probably what Darrell Walter wants. Get a caution flag, get in, and get his four tires he has saved, his good tires, to be able to try to win the race. Here's Neil Bonnet back across the start finish line to complete 327 laps here this evening. Stays in front. Leads by 10 seconds. Second place car is Bodai. And the third place car remains that of Ron Bouchard. Going a little bit further back in the field, that fifth place car is Petty. The sixth place is Rusty Wallace. And you can't say enough about his performance here this evening. Wallace having the best night of his rookie program on the Grand National Tour. Right now, there's a lot of contemplation going on. Harry Hyde said he's got something laid up for him. I can't imagine what that is. There's Richard Petty's crew. They're all thinking, what can we do on this last pit stop? We need to win this race. What can we do? What can we do to help our driver? They're all thinking. They're not saying too much. There's no action, but all their minds are working. It looks like such a simple game, and yet it's one of those things with so many infinite, the number of things that can happen that can throw you away in a race like this. It is unbelievable. It, 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 you would think driving a car around the racetrack would be the simplest thing in the world. But how it gets around the racetrack, all the springs, all the shocks. And the weight changes every lap. And actually, though it's asphalt, every lap that track changes. The surface changes. It does. And if you don't hit exactly the same spot, the surface is not consistent. You know, So every time that you go around the racetrack, you go in just a little bit different spot, and that makes a difference. As we follow number 47, Ron Bouchard, here down the back straightaway, t tell us how much throttle you use getting around this track. Right now, Ron is going into the third. He's completely off the throttle on the brakes. Now he's back on the throttle, but not all the way, just barely. Now, right now, he's back full throttle. Backs off the gas again, on the brakes, off the brakes, back on the throttle, but not all the way, just a little bit because it, the chassis is going to, the car is going to spin out if you get back on the throttle all the way. So Ron Bouchard, car number 47, is running in the third position. There's the man in first. It is Neil Bonnet. Can he stay there? Can he win his first race of 1984 at Nashville tonight? We'll know in less than 90 laps. It has been the dream of every stock car driver to ride around those big old tracks someday, but you have to start somewhere, and for so many of them, it's been right here in Tennessee at the fairgrounds. For some 30 years, they've been out here racing stock cars. Back when it was flat track, then it was 35 degrees, now 18-degree banks. And now it's a special occasion when the very best in the country come home to Nashville to show their wares. The fans here are about equally divided on the subject of a guy named Darrell Waltrip, who currently is maintaining one of those top four positions out here tonight and Dave Despain looks to us like this last pit stop tonight's going to be the one that really counts. Ken it's the oldest cliche in racing races are won and lost in the pits 
Typically at Nashville, it's the yellow flag pit stops that are the key. The calculators have been running furiously down here. We are in lap 345 now, and that means we've run 112 laps under the green flag. They can go about 160 laps on fuel, and there are more laps left than they have fuel in the gas tank. The point is that if we don't get a yellow flag, you're going to see these five leaders having to come in for a green flag stop. And boy, I'll tell you what, four or five seconds on the racetrack can go away in an instant. That last pit stop could very well decide this race. You're just watching Kathy Bodine scoring for her husband, Jeff Bodine, a lady in tears just a few weeks ago of happiness when her husband won his first race at Martinsville. They're a racing family, have a couple of children, but racing's their game, and it's it's a family enterprise. I don't think she has missed a race since Jeff Bodine started in Winston-Cup racing three or four years ago. She is his biggest supporter. Been a hard road for him over the years. He's had some very great years, the modified ranks, and a lot of disappointments, but that's what goes with the game. Sure does. You know, I think that Jeff Bodine is gaining on Neil Bonnet just ever so slightly. Well, let's put the watch on him, Betty. There's seven cars remaining in the lead lap. The car number 90, Richard Brooks, just went a lap down. We had eight cars, and we just saw car number 12. Neil Bonnet put a lap on Richard Brooks, who was having one of his best nights here. He's always been back in the teens and the 20s on the finishing order at this track. But the Junie Don Levy Ford has been running very well for him tonight, and he finally fell back off the lead lap. Long time under green here, and those leaders are still bunched seven strong for first place. Here's number five, Bodine maintaining second position and trying to close some ground on the leader. Number 12, Neil Bonnet. He is getting, I really, I haven't put a clock on him yet because Bob Lafford handed me a clock. I couldn't figure out how to work, but <laughs> <laughs> he looks like just looking at the distance on the racetrack, he is gaining somewhat. Well, you saw the report that there are 73 laps to go, and there is a pit stop that's pretty much demand of these cars. The fuel tank here, the fuel cell holding. 22 gallons again, that's all. Buddy Arrington goes under the lap down to Neil Bonnet, the leader in the Nashville 420. The thing right now, the, the pit strategy right now, Kenny, is really tough because if one of those lead cars, like Richard Petty, were to pit and change two tires and go back on the racetrack, he would be so fast for a little bit that it just might win the race for him, particularly if Bonnet and Bodine stays on the racetrack with those Warren tires. But the gamble that you take, if you make that pit stop, the caution flag comes out, you're lap down. Colorful congregation down there on pit road. As the field continues to assault this first turn, there is Richard Petty, number 43 and fifth. And back there in six is car number 88, Rusty Wallace, doing a dandy job here at Nashville tonight. Don't Wallace you know closing. that boy from St. Louis, Missouri, is really feeling good because he's read and heard about Richard Petty all of his life. And for 100 laps, he's looked at the back of Richard Petty's car. And Richard can't leave him. He's staying right there. Rusty Wallace in car number 88 with his outstanding performance of the year happening here under the lights at Nashville, Tennessee this Saturday night. Here's Wallace running for rookie of the year, and that's a pretty good scramble this year. It is a good scramble. You've I got, got a, a younger brother that's in that fight. He's leading the rookie chase right now. He decided not to come to this race, but he's leading. He's got about a 10-point lead over Rusty Wallace right now. Battle for fifth. Back with the leader, Neil Bonnet, closing in on Tommy Ellison, number four. Former national sportsman champion Tommy Ellis, and I believe his sixth Grand National start. Got a new team. They had an ad in the Grand National scene. Wanted. Sponsored. Yeah, right. <laughs> Ken, we've been following that interval. Benny, we found a stopwatch we could work down here. It took us a couple of laps to figure it out. Actually, the interval from the number 12 car of Neil Bonnet back to Jeff Bodine is holding at about six and a half to seven seconds. But further back, about three or four seconds, Darrell Waltrip is doing what he had hoped to be able to do, slowly picking up about a tenth of a second a lap on the leader. He's back within 10 seconds of the lead automobile. But unless we get a yellow flag, this one is all going to be decided on that last fuel stop. These cars do not have enough gas in the tank to run to the checkered flag. If we don't get a yellow, pit work is going to decide it all. And on that pit road, that should be some activity. Here's Neil Bonnet. It looks slow, but it's about 90 miles an hour right there. It's very deceiving what you see as they dive down through that corner. Number 12, Bonnet stays in front. Second spot, still Bodine within striking distance. And third is Ron Bouchard 
Fourth remains the number 11 of Waltrip, and fifth is Richard Petty. There's the 88 of Rusty Wallace, running for Rookie of the Year. He's surrounded asked, by Petties right now. We asked him what he liked about Nashville racing, and this is what Rusty Wallace, number 88, told us. Ken, there's just a lot of racetracks you go to the drivers prefer. They think it's their home type of track. They've, uh, you know, when Darrell Walton goes to Bristol or he goes here, he's won here a lot, so he naturally likes these two racetracks. Uh, if he goes to a racetrack he didn't win at, he doesn't like it. It's just, that's just the way I am. I've always did real good here. I prefer the racetrack, and it's just, I guess, I've always had a good setup. Number seven, Kyle Petty has been shown a lap down. He's right behind the 88, but he is not running in the same lap. That is not a contest for position. And this man is unto himself tonight. He seems to be able to go where he wants to go, do what he wants to do. Here at the Nashville Fairgrounds, Neil Bennett looking for that 14th win. Bonnet in the main straightaway, back into the first turn. What control? He's staying right on the bottom of the racetrack, just exactly where I feel like he needs to be to win the race. Driving hurt, driving well. You see him rocketing around. And on pit road, there's the number 75 of Marcus, the Raymock team car. Over the years, he's collected some Grand National wins. One time drove for the Roger Penske team. And they're going, looks like they're going all the way around. Four they're tire changing Four tires, they sure are. It'll cost him some time. Thank you very much for the cup, David. That's really strange strategy here with about 60 laps to go. How much dehydration do you fight on a night like this at Nashville? I would imagine most of these fellows are probably going to lose six, eight pounds. Although they drink, they, a lot of cars have thermos jugs inside the car with a, a hose that the driver can put in his mouth and suck the, more, the fluid out of the cooler. But after the race is over, they'll drink about a gallon of fluid, either uh, Water, Gatorade, something like that. How much? How much weight have you ever lost in a race? What was the most that you ever recall? I never. I've never weighed uh, before and after a race really to find out. But I would imagine 10, 12 pounds. Neil Bonnet scored his first victory of his Grand National career on a 5/8 mile track, Richmond Fairgrounds, September 1977, home of the Wrangler 400, coming up in September of 1984. We had a great race there on WTBS that Ricky Rudd in one of the comeback stories of the year, perhaps the decade. A terrible 190 mile an hour crash in the Bush Clash just a week or two before, two weeks before, and he came back and he won. Still hurting at Richmond on Paul Sawyer's track. Has he been around since 1977? I must be getting older all the time. 37 years old, had a lot of experience in Alabama and on this track. Laps running down. We now have a total of 365 laps complete. Sterling Marlin made a pit stop, his final pit stop for the day. Tommy Ellis is on pit road making his final pit stop. Oh, trouble! Dave Marcus and the leader got together coming off the second corner, and oh, I thought Neil Bonnet was gone. Neil Bonnet staying out of trouble, but just barely. Right behind him, Marcus, who almost gave him a slight cardiac stir. Here's Marcus trying to get that lap back with four new tires. See you later. <laughs> it's amazing Here's what kind of difference it makes. Number 12. Here's a word from Jerry Garrett. Now we're down here in Daryl Waltrip's pit. We just talked to Jeff Hammond, his crew chief. He says Daryl's always scheduled to make one more pit stop, but when he does, they're going to not only change all four tires and put on those good tires they've been saving, they've also got to make an important handling change because Daryl just doesn't have it to, to make up the difference right now. If you were a gambler right now, Benny Parsons, where would you put your money down? Well, Neil Bonnet. I would. Uh, he's for the last 200 laps, nobody's been able to get really close to him. So uh, it looks like he's got the race kind of under control. But you know, we all got to make a pit stop. Daryl Walter, you know, he's a pretty sharp guy. He knows exactly what he wants, and he's probably able to communicate with his crew as well as anyone. Interesting situation. Warner Hodgson racetrack and Warner Hodgson cars are now running first and fourth out here tonight, Benny. Well, and you know, Neil Bonnet is Warner Hodgson's uh, fair haired boy, I guess, if you would want to call it that, because he's the fellow that really has been Bonnet's chief benefactor the past two or three years. So I'm sure Warner is extremely happy tonight. Warner Hodgson is here tonight. Car number five is pitting. Second place car comes on to pit road. There you see him. Drawing down into the center of pit road is number five, Bodine, and his right side rubber. You surprised? No, not really. Uh, they, everybody's talking about changing four tires. I don't think that's wise at this point of the race. With only 50 laps to go, I think two tires is the change. 
two tire change. Bodine is away. Harry Hyde crew working very efficiently to bring Jeff Bodine back on the track. Now, just before he went out, he was in second. We'll wait on scoring to see where they pick him up. This will move Bouchard into second, put Darrell Waltrip in third, Richard Petty in fourth, going to fifth, Rusty Wallace, up to six, Ricky Rudd into seventh, car number 90, Richard Brooks. You know, 14 and nine tenths of a second, excuse me, Benny. 14.9 was the pit stop for two tires. And on that kind of pit road, that's excellent work. It is. You know, Jeff Bonan has forced the issue. Neil Bonnet is going to have to pit pretty soon because if he don't with those used tires, Jeff Bodine is going to put a lot of distance on him while he's out there on those used tires. Bodine with his new tires. Car number 12, bottom of the racetrack. Bonnet still working well. I think he's coming in. I really think that Neil Bonnet is going to come in this time. Here is car number 12 down to the bottom number 15 and here comes your leader on pit road leader is coming in car number 12 bonnet is giving up the lead give the lead now to car number 47 and he locks up the brakes and slides to a halt. Neil bonnets car number 12 for right side rubber. Look and they're changing the wedge on the car just a tad. Let's Junior see if Johnson. Charlie Roberts is right there Charlie. Junior Johnson went over the wall the footboard to tell Neil to come in. He only took on right side tires. This is getting down and dirty as we get into the closing laps of the Nashville 420. Change of wedge on the car, as you saw. Yeah. You know, as good as Neil's car was, he was he was leading the race. But now number 47, Bouchard, the leader, pitting. Ron Bouchard comes in. Draws to a halt. 14.6 was the stop on car number 12. 14 and 6 tenths of a second on car 12 bonnet. Clock ticking away on car number 47 Bouchard. Seems like they took a little extra time on the right rear tire. Getting those lug nuts down. He's away. Car number 11 Waltrip is in. Waltrip is in as Bouchard comes out. Number 43 Petty Pitty. Number 88 Rusty Wallace pitting. Bouchard is on the track. It's pit road now with number 11. Nobody gambling on four here with only 50 laps or less than 50 laps remaining. That's exactly right. Stop on 47 was 15 and a half. Petty trying to outgun number 88 and makes it out of the pits in front of Rusty Wallace. This really ought to be a good race for the next 50 laps. It really ought to be a good race. I'm looking forward to it. The car number 12 made it stop in 14-6. Car number 11, 13-3 was the pit stop on Darrell Waltrip 13 and three tenths of a second for Waltrip. Not a bad pit stop but you know on the racetrack Neil Bonnet has gained on Darrell Waltrip because I'm making the early pit stop. We'll be back with more from Nashville in a moment. The question is who will be king of the road at the Nashville Fairgrounds tonight and right now this man Neil Bonnet putting the lap on Rusty Wallace's number 88 currently the sixth place car trying to not making it there. He looks like he may wear the crown. Car number 12 Bonnet stays in front. We talked to him earlier about why this track tends to get slick as the race wears on. Neil. One of the key things that makes this track slick is these particular cars carry 20 something quarts of oil, a case of oil compared to four or five quarts in your street car. The engines are set up real loose where they have a lot of power and can turn a tremendous amount of RPM. In doing that, we blow a lot of oil out of the engines right out the exhaust pipes. Neil Bonnet in front. How about it, Dave Despain? Neil Bonnet in front, but by a lesser interval than we've seen in a long, long time, and that interval is shrinking. Jeff Bodine got a good pit stop. He got a good set of tires. He is closed within four seconds of the leader and he is gaining. Neil Bonnet's teammate, Daryl Waltrip, also had an excellent pit stop and they made a big chassis adjustment. They got in there and turned that jack screw that shifts the weight about eight cranks. They basically just threw the dice and said, we got to go to the other extreme and try to get Daryl back in the hunt. He got back out on the racetrack about 13 seconds behind Bonnet and promptly began losing ground. I think they went the wrong way on the screw. Bonnet has got himself the lead, but Jeff Bodine is closing in car number five. Number 44, the ninth place car, Terry Labonte going a lap down to number 12, Bonnet. 
is win number 14 here tonight or will number five Jeff Bodine persevere. Jeff Bodine definitely closing all the time now. He has some heavy traffic in front of him as he tries to weave and lurch his way through on this 5 8 mile high bank to catch this man number 12 Neil Bonnet here on WTBS tonight. We're down toward decision time less than 40 laps to decide the Nashville 420 and some two hundred seventeen thousand dollars in posted awards. Benny Parsons real crapshoot here. It really is. I think that Jeff Bodine is going to run out of time. That's my personal opinion is that he don't have quite enough laps to catch Neil Bynum. Number five Bodine right there in that second spot and you heard the expert and he speaks with 21 grand national victories to his credit. Benny Parsons with us this evening here on WTBS and our flag to flag coverage Bodine moves around Jay Thomas right behind in the Skull Bandit car which has had a lot of problems tonight and is not in the top 15 at this time. Bodine having just a super night great run for Jeff. As we mentioned if you're just joining us he has a fracture of a shoulder blade after a crash at Talladega just six days ago the man in front has a cast on his right arm but although they may be they were kidding today they said they needed to have places on pit road special for them they wanted a handicap parking out there tonight. Jeff Bonine is running across is run up on some heavy race traffic if he's going to win the brave race he's got to dispose of these drivers on every straightaway just get rid of them if they hold him up he's beat. Cherry Labonte a little high and Bodine puts him a lap down. Third place car Bouchard. But that was place. very costly for Bodine. The fact that Labonte raced him down the front straightaway was costly for him. It cost him a couple of tenths of a second and he can't afford that right now. Fourth place Waltrip. Switching to positions 47 and 11 look like they may want to get into it here. Closing up is Darrell Waltrip out of turn number two and we'll begin to follow that story. Here's your leader Neil Bonnet. Ronnie Thomas has just pitted and there comes the battle for third spot. Let's see what Darrell Waltrip has to offer. The man who's won this race the last two years is going to the outside. Bottom of the racetrack is number 47 Bouchard. Darrell Walters is running the spot that he's very unaccustomed to running here at Nashville on the high side. He's trying to pass Ron Bouchard on the outside. Doing a pretty good job of it too Kim. Here's Waltrip closing moving up. Lap car directly in front of Sterling Marlin. Down low Bouchard high Waltrip. Waltrip looking for that 60th Grand National win. Look oh and 47 is in the box. Here comes the 75 trying to make some room on the outside. The interval is continuing to shrink. Darrell Waltrip as he works with Jeff Bodine is closing up on the leaders. They're picking up about a tenth of a second a lap. They probably as Benny Parsons alluded don't have time but Jeff Bodine is definitely reeling in the leader and he's doing it in heavy traffic as the 11 and 47 battle for third continues. The story of this race is becoming Jeff Bodine and his charge at the leaders but don't count Walter out of this. Don't exclude the possibility of another yellow flag in the time that we have left. We've still got 26 to go. Car number 75 in that picture along with 11 and 47 is the 12th place car Dave Marcus. He's running back a lap or so running back two laps from the leaders. There he is Marcus in the blue white numbered car. Ron Bouchard is not letting Darrell Walter get too far away from him. He wants that third spot. If he could beat Darrell Walter here at Nashville, he would for a, his crew would be a moral victory anyway. Your head's down on your shoulder and your arms, they weigh like sledgehammers out here. You're into those final laps. They're on the radio to you, they're talking to you, they're telling you you've only got so much to go. Just keep it together. And you'll have yourself a finishing position for some of these men. Nine of them now reported back in the lead lap. Number 90, Richard Brooks, is shown back in the lead lap another time. Jeff Bodine, I think, is trying to make a liar out of me, Kim. I said he was not, didn't have time to catch Neil Bonnet, but he has almost caught him. Now here is Earnhardt looking like he's moving in on the inside and he's going to take a lap back here. Dale Earnhardt and the Richard Childress number three Chevrolet on the bottom side. The man who won here in the Bud Moore Ford carrying Wrangler colors last July. So something may have gone a little amiss on car number 12. Just might. And that arm, that right arm in the cast, I have to think that is a factor here. I would have to think it is. You know, the worst thing you can do right now is race with Earnhardt. If he just realized that Earnhardt was so far down, would let him go uh, and 
just get behind him like he's doing right now, he probably would run faster. And you see Bodine beginning he, to pull into the picture. He is in the picture. Jeff Bodine is just 10 car lengths behind him. There he is. He's about to put a lap on Jimmy Means. And then it's a clean shot up to number 12, who's having trouble dealing with number three and scrubbing off some speed and some rubber, using up the high side of the racetrack. Car number 12, Bonnet, getting down to the finish. Laps running out at Nashville. Will it be Bonnet? Will it be Bodine to decide the Nashville 420 this Saturday? Outside, Jeff Bodine is attacking. 408 laps complete. Bodine is beginning to make his move to win the Nashville 420. There's the block being thrown by the leader, number 12, Neil Bonnet. Bodine right there, works up alongside another time. Wheel to wheel, here they come for the lead, down toward the finish. It's Jeff Bodine on the outside. He sticks his nose out in front. Bonnet stays with him. Back they go into turn number one. Neil Bonnet squiggles just a little in the first and second turn. Bodine is trapped on a lap car. Trying to find a room around Trevor Boyce. Goes up on the high side. Back to second place is car number 12, Neil Bonnet, Jeff Bodine. Both first and second place, driving hurt here tonight. Into turn number one, Benny. How about those apples? I just, I just couldn't believe he was going. Oh, to get number twelve it. is in trouble. Spinning, crashing into the wall. It is Neil Bonnet all the way around. Car number seven just getting through and crunching the tail end. Kyle Petty bending up number twelve. It must be a tire was deflating or equalizing on car number twelve. Field rolls down across the back stretch. Here comes Neil Bonnet looking to pull in now. They race back to the yellow. Bonnet has taken on some damage out in front. And let's take a look at replay and what happened here. Benny Parsons. It looks like Neil just simply got the car a little bit too high. And around he goes. He's well, he's trying to win the race. That's exactly what he's doing. Is he wants to stay right behind Bodine and win the race. Trevor Boyce in contact up front. That chews up the front a little. Bodine did not pit. He did not pit, Ken. I do not understand that. Probably wants to make sure he's up there as much as he can be for the lead lap and get themselves adjusted. And he's probably talking on the radio right now reporting what he thinks the damages are so they can be ready for him when he comes in. Scoots back in front of traffic. Now watch Kyle Petty come into the picture here. The 12 uh -huh. car goes inside, then to the outside, then back toward the inside. That's where we got the damage on the rear end of the car. Poor Trevor Boyce. He looked like he was sent for about three <laughs> times in that accident. <laughs> now, who's going to pit? Is anybody going to pit? I mean, if Darrell Walter for Ron Bouchard, somebody else. Here Bonnet comes the leader. In. Bodine is in the pits. Bodine comes in quickly. Going to give up first place. Darrell Walter did not pit. 413 laps to go. Let's go down to pit road. They topped off the tank of Bodine's car. Right side tires. Bonnet's here, too. He's got some damage in the rear end of the car. Junior Johnson was out there bringing the team in. Let's see who gets off pit road first. 12. They're going to change the left rear on Bonnet's number 12. They're getting the jack under there right now. So apparently more problems than they thought. Bodine's still up pit road. Now they're going for left side tires. Bodine gets away first. And there's the drag race down pit road between Bonnet and Bodine. Bonnet out first. Bodine right behind him. But Waltrip stays on the track and stays first. How about it? I think he has enough rubber to stay there, Benny? I don't think so. You know, they're going to give him, surely going to give him one now the trucks. They're going to one lap to go this time, die probably. And so they're going to be, go racing with six laps to go. No, with five laps to go, they'll probably go back on the green flag. And there's only six or seven cars in the lead lap. Ken, in Grand National Racing, those six cars can get nose to tail and decided amongst those six or seven. So it's going to be interesting. I don't think Darrell Walton's got enough room. Now here's the picture. 414 laps to go uh, completed. Six to go. We're, we're giving a report of six to go now. 414 down. The accident happened with nine laps to go. They're running under caution. There you see number nine, Bill Elliott. The man in front going for that third straight for his eighth overall win in Grand National Racing at the Nashville Fairgrounds is Waltrip in the 11th. As he said at the top of the broadcast, 
That'll win this race. That'd be like the Grand Ole Opry without Roy Acuff. Well, here it comes another major surprise in this event. One lap, and they're going to turn them loose. That'll give them five laps to the flag. Waltrip will be in front. Second place car will be Richard Petty, number 43. The third place car, are you ready for this? Number 88, Rusty Wallace. You know what? That might be just enough for Darrell Waltrip to win the race. The, the cars with the new tires getting by uh, the 88 car of Rusty Wallace, Richard Petty, just might be enough to give Darrell Waltrip the shot he needs. Neil Bonnet in fourth. He's only four laps to go. Bodine in fifth. Bodine fifth. And Ron Bouchard is sixth, and B Bouchard has four new tires on. Can Waltrip hold them off? Petty is there. Can Petty win it? Six cars on the lead lap to decide it tonight here at Nashville. Mark this one, Saturday, May 12th, 1984. Six cars on the lead lap coming down. Benny? Four laps to go. When they cross the start-finish line this time again, four laps to go. 416 goes up on the board, and there are four to go. Waltrip squirts out in front. Petty is second. Darts down into the bottom side of turn number one. Right alongside is Richard Brooks, everybody safely away. Back straight away. There you see number 90, Richard Brooks, on the bottom side of the track. Going a lap down. Here comes Bodine in number five. And it's like a 25-lap sprint from here. Here comes Bonnet moving up through. He goes around car number 90. Rusty Wallace gets pinned on the outside. Down into turn number one. 11 is your leader. 43, Petty is in second and number 12. Bonnet coming back to third. Bonnet's car, Ripple, Rumple, beaten up. Two lap marker this time on the field. Walter pulls away, 10 car length advantage. Bonnet goes to the outside on Richard Petty. Petty down low, Bonnet up high. There's your leader, number 11. Waltrip going down into the turn. Battle is for second place. Wheel to wheel they go and Bonnet takes it. Neil Bonnet going into second spot and now he's trying to close. Trying to move in on his teammate. Oh, and we got a bad crash on the back straightaway. Three cars into the wall coming out of turn number two. Well back from the leaders. Coming around for a white flag and a white and a caution. It's over. 88 Rusty Wallace has crashed. 88 Wallace has crashed. We'll try to have you take a look at it in the replay. Here he comes. Caution is out. Number 88 Wallace finishing up in a blaze of sparks and a car on fire. It is car number 22. Allison's car coming down for the finish. The winner is going to be car number 11 will win it. 12 pulled up beside him, but they were under caution. Richard Petty is crashing, coming out of turn number four. Richard Petty has just spun and looped it, and his car lies right in the center of the track. An incredible finish. Oh, Kyle Petty just missed it. Oh, he spins and his Kyle Petty has crashed the main straightaway trying to miss his father. The whole track must be covered with metal and debris. Here's Bobby Allison backing down on pit road across the line. Car number 22, there is Bobby Allison. You see him on pit road backing across the stripe. Still backing. Well, I've seen a lot of finishes in a lot of years and I have never, ever seen anything like this. I don't believe it. I don't believe this. Well, here's what happened. Back straight away, we had about a five, six car jam session. It was back behind the leaders. And as it happened, it set it up to leave number 11 up in front. The caution flag came on as the white flag came out. Just an unbelievable finish. Number 88 is coming down on the pit road. The entire front end gone right side on Rusty Wallace's car. Boy, we're going to wait for the scoring on this. Now number 11 has just come to a halt. Hey, did I win it? He don't know where to go. He don't know whether to go to, to the gas pumps. Look at the Wallace. Scales. Look at Rusty Wallace, 88. Heartbreaker for him. We'll wait to see where he finished. 11 pulls up. Did he win it? Yes, Crowd he won is it. on their feet. I'm sure he won I'm it. Sure he caution was caution out. Flag. And he will go to victory lane because the caution came out as the white flag had been thrown the previous lap. When they came down for the white flag, yellow was on the track. They're saying that Neil Bonnet won the race. And now they're showing on the board that Neil Bonnet won the race. Here's the 11 car coming down. Hold the phone. Wait for the decision. What do you think, Benny? I think I'm confused. <laughs> I think this, I don't know what I think. <laughs> Junior Johnson's crew down there around the number 11. The 12 is involved. They both came across together. Now number 11 pulls back on the track. He's going to the scales to uh, put gas in the car. And Car number 11 going back. Car number 12 coming back out. Neil Bonnet coming out. 
He and waves to be White and yellow. The 12 will take it. Neil Bonnet will have it on white and yellow. Neil Bonnet won the race? We're going to take a look at it again. Boy, what a night and what a finish here at Nashville. I tell you what, it don't. <laughs> I, I'm exhausted, Ken. I think I'd be better off racing out there. The Nashville 420, and it was 20. Neil Bonnet don't even know how to get to victory lane. You see now he's backing up. Here's Neil Bonnet's car. And it looks like the 14th Grand National win will go to him and his kit crew elated, and the string of two straight by Darrell Waltrip is finished by his teammate. <laughs> well, we want to take a look at that last lap, because it sure looked like the yellow and caution was out. <laughs> Now they're taking the number down and they're putting up number 11. They're putting up, I think Darrell Walter won the race, as I said a moment ago, kid. <laughs> well, they've just taken down number 12 and they're putting up number 11. Well, Dave Despain was working his way down to victory lane. But who's he going to talk to when well, he gets there? I don't know. I might, might as well talk to Rusty Wallace at this point. The third position. You know, the fans Bodine, here. Bodine, number five, and the fourth position was car number 15, Ricky Rudd, and the fifth position was Ron Bouchard. The question is, who's first? Rock. Who's can't. on first? The people with Looks fans. It's like a comedy routine right now, Benny. We're in a glassed-in booth area. We can see the fans in front of us, and they're all turning around looking at us and saying, who won the race? And i got to tell them, I don't know. Now, now they're put, rolling 12 back. They put 12 on the board again. This is going to be one they're going to talk about for a long time to come. Now let's take a look in the replay, Benny Parsons. This looks official. This, this push. All right, here they come. But the question is, is when did the caution flag wave? The Daryl's on the inside, Neil Bonnet's on the outside on the ISO. But, you know, wh when is the caution flag? Does it wave the lap before? That's what I want to know. Here they come to the line. I agree that Neil Bonnet, but we're going to say he'd be to the line. Come on. Here they are coming to the stripe, and there is the car number 12 out there. Question is, which is the flag? Okay. Now, he beat him to the start finish line on the 420th lap. But my opinion is that the caution flag was out on the 419th lap. Well, it's I sort of think, I agree with you. I thought that on the 419th lap that we saw yellow and white. If we can get down, let's go to Dave Despain. Lane wins the race. Neil, did you win it or did Darrell Waltrip win it? Well, I know <laughs> I took the checkered flag up to then. I don't know what happened. You know, last few laps, I had a flat just before that last caution. The reason I spun out. And after that, I couldn't even see how many laps was left or what. I knew I just had to try to get back. I don't know what happened. At that point, you just charged for it. The officials are still trying to sort it out. In your mind, when did you get around Darrell Waltrip? Past Darrell in the fourth turn up there. I don't know. You know, it's uh, probably their judgment. You know, Junior and Doug and all guys did a heck of a job. We just did everything we can possibly do. It's in their hands now. And speaking of hands, how is yours? You drove this race with a broken wrist, and obviously it didn't hamper you too badly. I'll tell you, it's been about to kill me. I called them about an hour ago, and my thumb's been cramping. I can't move it, and it's all cramped up, but this thing here might make me forget about it. In a situation like this, when there's great controversy, what do you do? Do you jump into the middle of this, or do you let Junior handle it? I've done everything I can do. I've rode my 420 miles. It's up there. Well, the first guy to victory lane is Neil Bonnet. How long it'll take to find out who won the race may be another question. Ken? The issue would seem to be not the 420th lap, Benny, but 419. That now there's is, there's the Darrell question. Waltrip. That's the question that I have is, I felt like the Dwight and Caution both waved, and in those circumstances, in Grand National Racing, once you take the Caution flag and go across the start finish line, you can't pass. You get, we're gonna get a word with, uh, and, and you can tell that there's a very angry, uh, or not angry, but concerned, uh, Darrell Waltrip there, and we'll try to get a word with him in just a moment. And it's not what I understand. It's what's right and what I saw. The white and the yellow came out together. That's the end of the race. Okay, that's Darrell Waltrip and Darrell, of course, down here. White and yellow came out, so we'll wait for the official word, and perhaps the word will come from up here on topside rather than down on the track. Now, the circumstance began in turn number two. And uh, well, that's what happened. There was a caution flag on the 400. There was a crash 98. on the 418th lap. Right behind the leader, who was Darrell Walter, in second place was Neil Bonnet. That's Darrell Walter talking. Yeah, we'll, we'll get a word of him in just a moment. He's absolutely surrounded by the press. You can see Mike Palmer down there and other members of the press. And we've got ourselves an old 
old-fashioned conflict about how this one went tonight. We'll wait to see exactly what the count was on 419 from the flagman as to the as to the caution flag as to when it was thrown. I, I'm sure that Harold Kinder, as they went by, was waving the white and the yellow. But uh, you know, there's it ain't what there's I think. There is a uh, Daryl Waltrip walking away with his crew. Thank you, Daryl. Really going back into into his pit area, walking down and away. Well, you heard him say, yeah, "Caution!" Good. As far as he was concerned, he saw caution in white. That's right. He's not going to victory lane, that's for sure. Let's <laughs> pause for this word, and then we'll be back with more tonight from the Nashville 420, which is sure had its moments. Now here's the ruling, and it comes right out of the NASCAR rule book. How about it? I'm reading out of the NASCAR rule book under the caption, white flag. When the white flag is displayed, it means the leader has started his last lap. When the yellow flag is displayed during the white flag lap, all cars will be scored on the basis of the position in which they cross the start finish line after receiving the checkered flag. So on the last lap, you race back to the checkered flag. Exactly. I did not know that rule existed. Dick Beatty from the uh, uh, NASCAR has been here to pass the rule book along and said that's what it was. So, I, so Neil Bonnet has won the race. Neil Bonnet has defeated Darrell Waltrip in a squirmer here tonight in Nashville. Now, the incident that created this small holocaust at the finish line started in the back straightaway. It was coming out of turn number two where it all began. We're going to be taking a look at that in just a moment and giving you the final scoring, the rundown on how they finished this race. But as it came out, Darrell Waltrip has been finally stymied here at Nashville. He's won seven races here. He was going for three in a row and his fourth win overall in this spring race on the 5 8 mile track. But when it came down to the finish tonight, he apparently thought, as we look at it once again, there's the 12 car high they come down into the main straightaway and driving through to take the checkers at the line neil bonnet wins the 14th race of his career so warner hodgson had it won either way and of course uh darrell waldrip very upset as you heard he thought too as did benny parsons and the rest of us that when the white flag and yellow flag were displayed that that was what you would you would maintain positions not the case not the so case. there when you get to charlotte on Memorial Day, if it comes down like that, Benny, the, the, the whole point here is stand on it. I'll know exactly what to do, and that's stand <laughs> on the gas. Exactly right. Uh, unfortunate way for Darrell Waltrip to learn about that rule in Section 12, folks, if you're following your rule book tonight. <laughs> you know, and, and Darrell Waltrip probably is still convinced that he won the race. Well, let me tell you who finished third. Richard Petty finished third, then he crashed. Jeff Bodine finished in fourth tonight. I believe that's right. We're waiting for the final word. Hold on. Update update latest word from Bob Latford is that the third place car will be number five Bodine the fourth place car will be Ricky Rudd and the fifth place car in this melee will be car number 47 Ron Bouchard Petty had spun as they came out of turn number four but the major incident was in turn number two and I believe we'll be able to show it to you in just a moment I've seen some wild finishes in some 30 years but none ever to match what we've seen here on WTBS tonight never have I ever seen anything like this in my life now let me tell you again that the uh, finish order I just gave you is extremely unofficial at this point well you know if we if we take the rule that I just read Richard Petty did not cross the start That's finish right. line so Let's take a look at Richard Petty's problem here. That was up in turn number four. There he lies with the potential of getting center punched by a whole group of cars as they were coming down now the line. Now watch his son, watch Kyle. Ooh, he's missed him and he's Just spins. missed his father. And then he loops his car, crunches the nose on the wall. Backs in the fence. That'd have been something if he'd torn up. And here he comes the Rusty Wallace car from the previous incident that happened up in turn number two. Which would have been what, with with uh, two laps to go? A lap and a half. Lap and a half to go. Yeah. Lap and a half. And he beats Richard Petty to the line. So Rusty Wallace finished in front of Richard Petty. Looks looks that way from here. <laughs> so Very unofficial, as you said. The one thing that uh, we haven't had a, a chance to gander at is whatever became of all those cars out of turn number two, Benny. Well, Bobby Allison caught on fire going in turn three. Saw that. Yeah, and he backed across 
down pit road across the start finish line so it, it has wild. been some night here